Good morning. How are you doing today? Welcome one and all to the uh, channel. It's uh, it's Bruce here, uh, Stock Markets with Bruce. Welcome to uh, August the 3rd. It's Tuesday, August the 3rd. Already the 3rd of August. Are you kidding me? Man, oh man, I'm not ready for this. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, another day of fun, fun, fun. Uh, let's see if we can make some money today. Hopefully me? some stocks man. will go up in price and make us richer and, and uh, everyone will be happy and uh, everyone will run out that isn't vaccinated will get vaccinated right away because life is worth living and it'll be fantastic uh it, you know we go traveling again and we can hug each other it's going to be great um beautiful stuff uh <laughs> the dow's up 91 in the pre-market yeah uh sp up nine and nasdaq up 17. the bad news is the market just got the word that um that uh uh what's his name <laughs> it's gonna start talking <laughs> what's what's his name bruce uh who's that guy uh, i'm talking about the uh sec chair uh, gensler to speak on bitcoin get ready for regulation that that's the headline that just broke a few minutes ago so uh, gensler the head of the sec apparently is going to have a, sh a little speech and he might mention uh bitcoin and other currencies cryptos and uh you know, people are thinking woo, there could be regulation coming down the road and so the dow took a a nasty little spill here uh, in anticipation of happy news from this guy. Although uh, I'm not sure if that's truly going to happen. I don't know if that's going to be all that important. But uh, anyway, uh, there's there seems to be more uh, seems to be more regulation in our futures than less. I, I get the impression. I don't know. Uh, SoFi is up uh, the 17 cents to 15.90. Um, this morning was at 16.20. It already touched 16.20 this morning. So it looks like SoFi is just itching to get going. 103,000 shares traded on SoFi. I'm happy to see that. Um, I'm not surprised to see it though. Uh, really, the stock is uh, way oversold and uh, way below its real value. In my opinion, I think it's trading at uh, barely half of what it should be trading at. It should be closer to 30 bucks. Uh, that's just me though. Uh, we'll see if the rest of the street catch, catches up with my thoughts. Matterport, 1609 on the pre-market, up 21 cents today. Can't complain about that. I don't think there's no point in complaining about that. We're, we're up 21 more cents. The stock has been slowly uh, but surely uh, moving higher in the last uh, week or so. Um, last Tuesday, Wednesday, it was sitting around the uh, 13 or 1295 level, 1310 level, 1320, 30 level, got to 1350. By Wednesday, it got to 1370, 80, 90. By Thursday, it cracked $14. And when higher, it, it even reached uh, 1550 at one point on, on Thursday, Friday, back down to 1470, and then coming on again to 1580.90. And then yesterday, we touched 1640 uh, as we're now into the 16s. And here we are at 1609 right now. We were just under 16 all day yesterday, around 16 all day yesterday. So that's where, where Matterport is. And they have not released any news. This is just a company that has a way of attracting attention, I think. And I believe that uh, as this stock gets more discovered, and it will, it will go higher, much higher. Um, fantastic. Uh, there's news coming. There's financials coming. There's conferences coming. There's promotion coming. Oh, there's all that's coming. But um, yeah, it's already moving up without even, they're not even talking and it's moving up. Uh, stock where they're not talking and it's going down is uh, Sixtero, um, CYXT. Uh, uh, they're not talking, and their stock is not moving. Uh, we haven't had much in the pre-market yet, so we'll have to wait for that. Uh, it seems to be indicating down 10 or 20 cents. We'll see if that's true or not. Fifth wall acquisition has not traded in the pre-market. Generally doesn't. Uh, close to 1244 yesterday. Did all right. It's hanging around. It, it, we're just waiting for the uh, official word on the um, shareholder vote uh, to be turned into smart rent. And uh, I think this one's a winner, too. It's going to be a big one, and uh, we're waiting for that. Um, ATIP. Uh, this morning on, uh, what is it, 1.9 thousand, 1,900 shares traded, sitting at 375. We're, we're not going anywhere yet. Um, had a good day uh, uh, or better day yesterday. I don't know if it's a good day. We had a better day. So it was up 34 cents to 375, low of 336 yesterday. So definitely improvement. Uh, we're looking for substantially more than that uh 23 and me uh slowly getting better was up to uh, it was as low as 772 yesterday at one point people were getting ready to jump off the ledge uh then it popped up and closed at 823 just 10 cents off its high today up 38 cents yesterday it's now uh, 836 in the pre-market 
Um, it's actually already been to 850 a share today. It's already been at 854. So uh, it's, uh, it's already come off 20 cents from its high of the morning already. So it looks to be uh, uh, coming up just a, a little bit here, a little bit there. No news that I know of. Um, uh, yeah, they're going to report their first quarter results uh, soon uh, and, and do a conference call and all that stuff. But I have, no, I have no updates at this point. But the stock is inching just a little bit higher. We're still, though, a week and a half from the, uh, from the press conference and the uh, earnings report. So hopefully the shares will just keep running up. Uh, creeping up, just just go up. I don't care how you do it. Just just go higher. We'd be fine by me. Uh, IBM up thirty six cents, uh, one forty one seventy eight. <clears throat> this stock, uh, you know, inches up a little here, a little there, and just and just uh, drives a lot of my investors crazy. A lot of my viewers. Uh, NAV site nine ninety five down a penny. Nothing going on here today that I can tell you. Uh, VACQ uh, vector acquisition up uh, three cents to ten oh five. Got to ten oh six. No, no real volume. This is this is Rocket Lab. This will become Rocket Lab, and we know it will become Rocket Lab on the twentieth of August. Seventeen days. Um, Vector, by the way, will become. Uh, uh, sorry, Navsite will become uh, Spire Global uh, uh, on August the thirteenth. That is in ten days. So we have a lot of stuff happening very soon. Uh, we just have to wait this through. Um, What's AMC doing? Good old AMC, 35.40 up 20 cents on the pre-market. Uh, yesterday dropped the buck 82 to 35.20. Now 35.40. Uh, not a lot happening at this point in time. Uh, you know, there's uh, you know people expecting to go to the moon because it's heavily shorted and and, and over shorted and all that. And it's not happening. Um, it's just kind of hanging around here. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what uh, see what it brings us. Okay, uh, there's where. We're at there. GameStop, 157.65 uh, last night on the close. It was down 347 yesterday. And uh, it ranged from 155 to 163.59, kind of a typical $8, $9, $10 move per day. 156.63 at the moment down a dollar and two cents on 6,400 shares. We are talking dead calm, quiet. Now, there's news out this morning uh, uh, again uh, about more Chinese authority crackdown um i get a i get a kick out of out of how uh, how to the, how the news media describes uh, china uh when they say stuff like uh the chinese authorities are cracking down on video games or video game play specifically on tens uh, with tencent and the shares of tencent are under pressure and uh, game uh, game uh, developers and, and and whatever are are worried that China might outlaw gaming or restrict gaming uh, for children twelve and older or or what whatever or twelve and under. Um, it's Chinese authorities. Um, <laughs> would you imagine if uh, if you were to watch your your news uh, one day um, on your favorite channel, whether it's Fox or CNN or MSNBC or what, whatever your favorite channel is, I don't care what it is, doesn't matter. And um, the, you saw uh, you you saw the uh, the uh, host uh, tell you on the air that um, yeah, um, uh, U.S. authorities um, have uh, uh, have decided that uh, gaming is a, is a bad thing for children, and they're going to limit the amount of time parents can allow their children to play games. U.S. authorities, who the hell is that? <laughs> Canadian authorities, German authorities, UK authorities. Yeah, China authorities. Uh, China, China. Uh, who, who is, who are these people? Who, who are, who the hell are these guys? Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. I, are there any photos of these Chinese authorities? Who are these Chinese authorities? These are mystery people. These are people behind a curtain. I have no idea who you're talking about. I have no idea. Regulators. Uh, who are they? Who are these? Who are these people? Um, who who has the uh, how do these people have power over 1.3 billion individual people like this to uh, make them do whatever the hell they want them to do? How, how does the hell does that work? Uh, yeah, well, there's a society for you. Would, would you like to live under that kind of regime? Would you like to uh, you like to wake up in the morning and wonder if the authorities the authorities are okay with you working for the company you work for, doing what it is you do? Um, or has your boss been declared, um, you know, has your company and organization been declared illegal, a bunch of hooligans and criminals, and now you're being charged with a crime? 
Uh, how would you like to do that? Um, yeah, uh, welcome to their little world, uh, their little hellscape. Unbelievable. China authorities. Um, this doesn't end. This will not end. This will not stop. This will continue on down the line for months and months and months. There is a purge going on in China right now. And the purge is against anyone who has free thoughts other than thoughts of to make the state great. And uh, the problem is um, you don't know what thoughts you're supposed to have to make the state great. You might be thinking of ways to make the state great, but the authorities think that that's not the way we, we like it. You're a traitor to this country. You're in jail. Uh, now you can hire a lawyer. Oh, by the way, no lawyer will take your case because no lawyer is stupid enough to represent someone who's been accused of being against the state to be the lawyer for that person because then that lawyer is against the state. I mean, come on, uh, let's get real here. Um, <laughs> Communism 101. Most of you uh, who watch me are younger than I am. You're about 20 years younger than me or younger, mostly. Uh, so you're in your 40s, your 50s, your 30s, so uh, your 20s. You guys have no idea what it's like inside a communist country. You have no idea. Now, neither do I in, in the fact that I have never lived in one. Thank goodness for that. Um, however, uh, through my entire youth, uh, uh, through my entire existence, when my mom and dad were around, uh, <clears throat> I used to get the, uh, I used to ask them questions about the Russians, you know, the Soviet Union, this mysterious country in the east and they would tell me the horror stories and i would ask them well how do you know about this stuff and they say we have relatives that live there well how do we have relatives living over there how do we have any relatives living in in part of the soviet union and they would explain to me that after the second world war uh, or at the end of the second world war like the last three months of the second world war there was a race <laughs> there was a uh, competition between um, uh, on the one side there were the americans the Canadians, the Brits, the French, uh, the Danes, the, the, the everybody on the West, the Allies were rushing to the East to conquer as much as Germany as humanly possible to catch as much of, uh, uh, of other Europe as possible. And there was a race from the East West, which was the Soviet Union, mainly the Russians who were attempting to uh, capture as much territory as they could because at the end of the war, when that time came, when Germany would fall, the forces would stop moving now. And there would be a line between the Russian side and the Allied side. And that line is the what became the Iron Curtain. That, that line was the difference between democracy and communism. And uh, Roosevelt knew full well, as did Truman, uh, as all this was ending, but Roosevelt, Truman, all the generals, Eisenhower, who was run, who was the chief guy for the Allied forces, uh, Montgomery for the Brits, and everybody else, they all knew we have got to capture as much German territory as we possibly can. We've got to catch as much territory as we can past um, Denmark, the Netherlands. Uh, we've got to get, um, we, we've got to go through the Baltic. Get, we try to get as far into the Baltic states as we can get uh, on the north end. We have to get Italy back. We've got to get as much of, of the of the uh, Eastern Europe back as we can, because if the Russians get to a certain point, we can't fight these guys and they can't fight us. We don't we're not at war with each other. We're actually allies. We're actually allies coming in on the Germans, but the allies will have a line between the Russian allies and the uh, Western allies. And now we're on the opposite side of each other and, and now we're no longer allies anymore. And now we're adversaries. And it's been this way since 1945, since the end of the Second World War. And uh, uh, countries like Austria were caught in the middle of all this mess because Austria had been taken over by the Germans in a bloodless takeover before the war even started. And both sides agreed that after five years of time in 1950, that Austria should be returned to the Austrians and that it is not, Austria is not part of the Soviet Union, will not be part, uh, but Austria will be not part of Germany either. It will be its own state again. And so after five years, the allies, um, they pulled, they agreed with the Russians. Okay, we'll take our tanks out of here. We'll take our soldiers out of here. We'll leave our diplomats in here. Uh, but but Austria will be for Austrians to decide their future. And after 1950, Austria returned to Austrian rule. But up until that point in time, from 45 to 50, Austria was run by the Russians and the, uh, the Western allies. 
they the, divvied up the country and administered it for five full years. It would have been a lot of fun being an Austrian, huh? In any event, my parents told me all these stories about what happened in Poland, what happened in uh, in uh, uh, Czechoslovakia, what happened in uh, in uh, places like Lithuania and Estonia, and uh, um, all of these satellite countries have ended up becoming dominated and taken over by the Russians because the Russians never left. They never left after the Second World War. They kept their tanks right there. And East Germany never never came back to West Germany until 1989, 1990. It only took 45 years. Um, and so my parents are very familiar with the East German, West German whole thing. And my father being in the NATO army, being part of the Canadian uh, military and being stationed at a military base, a NATO base 20 miles from the Russian front, East Germany, uh, he had a lot of strong opinions on what life was like on one side of the border versus the other. And, um, and, uh, and that really interested me. And so um, I studied that very I paid attention to it quite quickly, very intently. And I noticed that whenever mom and dad had friends over, relatives over, um, fellow German friends and associates, and like my father was a leader of, a, of an orchestra, he had 24 guys that he was you know, conducting, and they were all kind of his age. And, uh, uh, you know, he'd have two or three of the boys over with their wives for cake and coffee on a Sunday and, and the booze would be flowing and the stories would be flying. And I'd be the, I'd be the little kid in the corner, just shutting the hell up and listening because this is more entertaining than any television show. And I'm listening to these adults talk to each other. And these are people in their thirties and forties talking about what's happening in Europe right now and what was going on in East Germany and what's happening in Poland and all this stuff. And it was just, it was just breathtaking. And uh, this is gone now. Th this talk is gone now, because they're they're all dead. They've all passed on. They're all you know. They all got old and they passed on. But oh my gosh, the stories! And so now I'm watching the China show, <laughs> the China show, and the China show hasn't stopped. The China show continued on. Uh, the communist uh, thing continued on. We know what happened with Russia and the Soviet Union. It all broke apart. Now there's you know Putin and his little gang of hoods running that place. Uh, and all the garbage going on in Belarus with that moron who won't uh, leave town, um, oppressing his own people. And on it goes. In the year 2021, this still continues on. And now we have China, one of the most sophisticated countries in the world with regards to its surveillance and its electronics, computer technology. Uh, um, we are talking about communism 2021. This is today's version of communism. And... Uh, they are beginning to clamp down. Uh, they've gone too far to the to the west, too far to capitalism, and now they got to bring it back into the central area to control everything from head office, which is what is head office? Beijing. Everything has to be controlled from Beijing, where the authorities are. That's where the authorities are, the unelected, appointed by the party who are running unopposed every election, the party people who run the show. And uh, the 1.3 billion uh, victims, uh, slaves, uh, uh, you, you, you call them what you want. You can call them Chinese nationals. You can call them uh, kidnapped people. Uh, you can call them uh, saps. You can call whatever you want to call 1.3 million, 1.3 billion of them are inside uh, China or whatever that number is. It 1.1, 1.3, it doesn't matter. It's over a billion. They're inside the borders of China and the authorities call the shots. And they're calling the shots right now with a genocide over in uh, that one territory where people are just disappearing. They're going into re-education camps and they never come out. It's incredible. Uh, it's like a college where you go in, but you never come out uh, because they never seem to be educated enough to be released and graduate. Uh, it's amazing. They come out in body bags and caskets funny that um and yet uh, the west does business with these people and uh, we we love lovingly do business with the chinese lovingly and um we're appalled at the human rights abuses we're appalled at uh, what's happening in hong kong we're appalled what's happening to people uh, who have uh, you know i would have thought the right to breathe and live but no oh no they don't have the right the authorities will say otherwise and now video games are in the on the crosshairs of uh, the authorities the video games are in the crosshairs of the authorities. And this is going to be interesting um, because <laughs> Chinese children love video games um, and the universities uh, in China. Oh, my God, every every young guy and girl love playing video games. Uh, well, video games are uh, not really celebrating the communist way. Um, video games are kind of like where you are yourself and are breaking out and are 
living your life and dominating your world and winning. Uh, well, winning winning individually is not allowed in China. You don't win individually. You win as a nation, and uh, that's that's the authoritative way. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Um, again, I keep coming back to uh, uh, you know a couple of inconsistencies in our lives. Uh, the fact that we love these, but they're made in China. Uh, we love our toys, and we love our uh, you know love our cheap lifestyle. Comparatively speaking, it's all made in China. And um, uh, what we don't know, and what you can't know, is um, who what you buy at your Walmart store, at your Target store, at your Costco, at your whatever you wherever you shop online, Amazon. I mean, whatever you buy on Amazon, likely is made in China. Um, Home Depot, they're experts in importing from China. Um, what you don't know is where in China it's made and by whom. You don't know if it's made by actual people who can make a living or whether you're talking about uh, prison labor, uh, for example, uh, state state run prisons where uh, they have factories on site and uh, they just whip them to uh, to death and they, they pay them a dime a day. If they pay them at all, they feed them until they, uh, you know, until their sentence is done and then they're theoretically allowed out. Uh, we don't know. Um, too much, uh, way too much uncertainty. Um, there certainly is no transparency. Uh, I'll tell you that. Uh, the American authorities, uh, especially on, on the New York Exchange and NASDAQ, they waver from uh, saying they're going to delist these companies and then they don't uh, because of lack of transparency. The SEC waivers. Um, I think there's a huge, huge tug of war going on uh, between different forces in, in the U.S. and in Canada and in Europe and everywhere else because we're addicted to the cheap Chinese product, the priced product from China, but we're also appalled at how they treat their own people and now how they're you know whipping their saber around trying to you know tell tell the world we're 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 tough guys we we deserve to be respected as the number one you know country in the world and blah 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 um uh, yeah we're 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 appalled at that we're not too impressed with human rights stuff but we love the cheap prices and so you know what do you do uh, do you buy made in switzerland uh, pocket knife or do you buy made in china pocket knife um if you want to buy the made in Switzerland pocket knife, you're going to go to uh, uh, Cabela's or or, or, so, or maybe a higher end uh, uh, retailer. You're going to buy the made in China uh, pocket knife. You're going to buy it on Amazon. You're going to buy it at Kmart. And you're going to pay uh, double the price for the one versus the other. And uh, what do you need it for? And, and, um, and uh, you know, what do you do? Uh, and those of you out there, there's many of you out there who took the cheap route. Uh, and it's millions of us. We're all, I'm guilty. We're all guilty of this. Uh, and that keeps that game going over there. And as long as those folks can uh, appeal to our pocketbooks, they will take the pennies that they get out from every dollar of transaction and they will continue to fund the authoritative way. And, um, this will not end. I'm waiting for, um, kind of the regulators to grow a spine. Um, kind of waiting for New York stock exchange, uh, NASDAQ. SEC, um, all the other agencies to grow a spine and say, you're out. China, you're out. Um, you're not going to be clear with the financials. You're delisted. You're, you're, you're no longer here. We don't trade you anymore here. I'm waiting for uh, Western authorities to start uh, cutting off banking links. They're not going to do it. Uh, they're addicted to the Chinese business. It's, um, it is um, it's so lucrative to deal with China from an economic point of view that uh, uh, too many people at too high, how do I say this? There's so many Western-based business people, way up top end business people who know all the atrocities. They know that, but they look the other way because the dollar is more important. And uh, they are funding their politicians with re-election campaigns like super PACs uh, to either fund your re-election or fund your defeat, whichever way you want to go. Um, behind the scenes without their name on the on the check and so that uh, that politicians find that they're up against all kinds of opposition they don't know who's the hoop they're up against but they're actually up against the richest people in their own country because those those folks have a a vested interest in keeping this economic game going screw the human race i want to make my money uh someone else can fix that problem it's not my problem i want to make the money uh there you are there's your there's your dichotomy there's your 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 dilemma as humans as individuals that we are uh we can break china like that we could break it uh in a minute uh we'd have to just together at the same time say i'm not buying anything made in china 
anything made in China, I'm not buying it. I'm not going to buy it. Sorry. It, it has to be manufactured somewhere else. Uh, you start doing that, um, that really puts a crimp in things uh, instantly uh, because millions, hundreds of millions of people, billions of people uh, boycott China and made in China product. You change, you change the, the, the narrative. The problem is that your leaders and my leaders aren't going to change the narrative. They're going to talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk. And uh, unfortunately, um, our countries would rather send warships into the China, South China Sea to try to make a point. But there is no point to be made because the Chinese can take them out uh, quickly because they underestimate just how powerful the Chinese military really is. Um, it's incredibly powerful. Um, the Chinese military is not who you're going to beat. You have to beat the Chinese business side to, to knock China down. You have to, in effect, bankrupt them. That's what happened to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union did not lose to the United States and the, the NATO powers because it didn't have enough weapons or crew, uh, 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 warships or aircraft carriers or jets or submarines. The Soviet Union didn't lose its, its stature as a gigantic superpower because of that. No. It lost it because it got bankrupt. It became uh, uneconomically viable to continue on as a superpower as it was. The United States outspent, and its allies, outspent the Soviet Union um, in, in military and everything else. But most, mostly what did it in was the, the public, the average uh, uh, citizen of the Soviet, of Russia, and of all the satellite countries that were dominated by Russia, they stopped working very hard. They they gave it up and they said, "I'm not, I'm not putting in 60 hours a week to uh, to make this uh, state of mine a better, stronger state, because none of it is flowing to me. It's only flowing to the Politburo, the the authorities. It's it's going to the authorities. There are certain people in in the Soviet Union, Russia, and other countries that live very happy lives and very fruitful lives." And uh, their children um, uh, have all the amenities that uh, you could ever want. My children starve. Uh, my, we, we wear used clothing. We, I get a pair of shoes once a year. These guys are buying a pair of shoes every week. Um, I'm not playing this game anymore. And that's how it stopped. In China right now, the public, the 1.1 billion, will continue on uh, slaving away as long as their lives are improving. But once they feel that the authorities are taking advantage of them or the authorities are getting far more upside than they are, they will lose them the incentive to keep on going. And no matter how much propaganda they put on state news or state television or state radio and try to dominate uh, Chinese people to, to you know, give more to the country, they will eventually go, enough of this. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't need this bullshit anymore. And once they get to that point, the whole thing crumbles. And what begins it is the lack of demand for product that they're making. If there's a 10% drop in demand for Chinese goods, overnight from average people, and I'm talking just middle class and lower, uh, that starts breaking the system immediately. And um, that's all it takes. It doesn't require your president to say anything or my prime minister to say anything or, or Gore, what's his name in the UK or Angela Merkel in Germany. We don't need any world leader to say anything about China whatsoever. They, they're powerless to stop China. They really, they, they could either throw the military into it to defeat them, which they're not going to do, uh, or it has to go the other direction. The only way it gets stopped is when the average human being on the planet goes into a store to buy a new spatula for the kitchen or whatever it is you need. Uh, you go into a home hardware and you're looking to buy a screwdriver and you find out where the screwdriver is made and you realize that, oh, uh, Stanley, Stanley screwdriver made in China. No, no, it's got an American name on it, but it's made in China. Um, So-and-so screwdriver made in um, Vietnam or made in Indonesia or made in India or made, it's not gonna be made in America. You're not gonna find a screwdriver made in America that I know of that you're gonna afford. Um, I don't think so. Um, it's when you, when you back off and go, I'm not buying, I'm not buying Chinese made product, anything, even if it's a buck, 10 bucks, a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. I'm not buying it. Um, you make that shift, everything changes within days, weeks, and months. And it goes right to the top. The authorities go, what's going on? What's wrong? Why, why isn't it? What's not working? Cause money's not coming in all of a sudden orders aren't coming in. Factories are idling. Uh, container ships are sitting in our harbors longer and longer and longer before they get containers of, of goods to send up. 
what's wrong here? Uh, well, there's a boycott. There's an international boycott of uh, Chinese goods, and it's uh, led by people, not governments, people. And uh, you, you, can, you can blame the President of the United States all you want for causing insight and interfering with our internal affairs. But if Americans do not buy this stuff, um, it doesn't matter what the president wants to do or any, any political leader in the United States wants to do. If Americans boycott Chinese goods, it doesn't matter what any governor, mayor, of, or, or senator, or congressman, or president want or don't want. Americans rule. And uh, it happens with the consumers everywhere in the world. That's what needs to be done, and uh, I don't see it happening uh, at the moment. I don't. I don't. I don't see it happening. I don't think enough of us are outraged enough or want to know. And I think that's the real problem. We don't want to know. We we would rather just look the other way. And just go. Well, that's you know that's their problem. It's it's not my problem. It's their problem. Okay. Well, uh, the 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 suffering will continue until conditions change. In any event, uh, this is just an old man ranting. Uh, I'm 65. I can do this. My 24-year-old compatriots out there, uh, uh, you know, they don't talk about this kind of stuff because they talk to 18-year-old day traders who want to flip stock in five minutes. And so, fair enough, uh, talk about whatever you want to talk about. But they might be talking about video games this morning. That might be their topic of the day because the Chinese are now stepping into video games, thinking of maybe outlawing video games to anyone under 21 years of age. <laughs> I'm going really. That's 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 going to be something. That was, what a war! What a culture war that could be. Uh, wow, unbelievable. In any event, the Chinese uh, uh, are still listed in the USA. Uh, Chinese stocks are still available. Um, I'd avoid them at all costs. Uh, I can tell you right now, the smart money is walking away. The smart money, ETF money, mutual fund money—they're getting out. They're getting out. Have gotten out. Are staying out. They're also buying puts. They're 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 on the opposite side of the market on Chinese stocks, big time, because uh, China is not going to turn around tomorrow and go, oh, it's okay. Uh, we're going to allow uh, education stocks to do what they do. We're going to allow capitalism to 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 just flourish in China again. It's not happening. The authorities have a long term game plan. They have a 10, 20, 50 year game plan to dominate every aspect of Chinese life and thinking. And so that means the Western outside world will be shut out of China. And it starts with investment. It starts with the money. If Gensler is going to talk about um, uh, messing with the uh, with the cryptocurrency, if he's going to talk, talk about crypto uh, controls, watch out, everybody. If any of you guys have money in crypto, uh, be forewarned. You might see half a uh, half year value disappear in the next three months. It's not going to happen today, but it's going to happen systematically. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Western governments, <clears throat> the USA, Canada, the Brits, the Germans, the French, Italians, all G20 countries, uh, Japan included, <clears throat> Australia, uh, India, uh, all the G20 are desperate for tax revenue and do are not interested in having in any way any of their currencies being taken over by a cryptocurrency instead. It's just not going to happen. National governments have a vested interest in keeping currencies controlled and being able to monitor it. It's the only way to collect tax. It's much more difficult to collect tax off of crypto transactions unless you do what the US Treasury is starting to do. And that is the routine of any transaction of 10,000 or more has to be reported uh, by banks and, and other holders and other transaction entities to the authorities, the authorities, and um, soon they'll be withholding taxes. It'll come to the point where you will try to transfer um, a crypto from one entity to another, and there'll be a 10% withholding tax taken out. 10% of it will just be uh, put away. Credited to your tax account. It's okay. Uh, we have your money. We've we've uh, put a credit on your IRS report that we just got $500 from you. Thank you very much. Now, you justify why you should get it back. Good luck. Good luck with that. They don't answer their phones over there. <clears throat> They're understaffed. I don't know if you've heard about that, but the, the Republicans have made sure the IRS is uh, one-tenth as powerful as it used to be because they are in eliminating the IRS with respect to uh, enforcement. Um, and so, uh, you know, good luck trying to get a refund out of those guys because there's no one to talk to over there. Yeah, lots of fun. Anyway, I'm not saying the IRS is a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just a thing. But that thing is no longer the thing it used to be. Uh, the thing it used to be used to be all powerful, all scary, uh, terrified every American in the world. Every American where were you were in the world were terrified of the IRS. <clears throat> it's a much less thing than that. Uh, but on the, the bad side, unfortunately, is that those Americans who depend 
on the IRS to be able to collect taxation dollars in so governments can spend tax dollars out in food stamps and, and support programs and senior citizen pensions and, and social security payments and, and military expenses and <clears throat> all that stuff. Well, what the government doesn't bring the dough in, it doesn't have it to spend out, so it has to borrow it to make up the difference. And right now, government, that's the way government likes to play the game. Government has been playing this game for 30, 40 years. Uh, <clears throat> the last time the United States government had a surplus was when Clinton was in office. And that was only because George Bush, the elder, passed tax increases after he said no new taxes. He would put in new taxes anyway. And the United States had its greatest surplus since the 1950s. Um, but that didn't last long because George Jr., the son, took care of dad's mistake. He immediately started spending like a wild man and cut taxes like you couldn't believe. And then he defunded the IRS and uh, everyone after it uh, uh, couldn't refund the IRS back to where it was. And so welcome, America, to your $20 trillion deficit, whatever your deficit is. Welcome. Uh, you can thank the Bushes for that. You can thank the Reagans for that. You can thank, uh, uh, you know, every administration gone on and on and on it goes for that. You're welcome. Uh, it's okay. Um, and uh, and here we are. Here we, here we are today. Uh, the markets, remarkably, are at all-time highs. It, it's incredible. Uh, how does that work? How can a country like the United States have a $20 trillion deficit uh, debt? How can I have a $20 trillion overall debt and the markets are at all-time highs? How does that work? Uh, well, when you have 0% interest rates because you have no growth, uh, you don't have enough growth, you don't have sustained growth, um, and you've got a uh, uh, you've got a population that is getting crushed by uh, higher expenses, um, lower opportunities. Um, you you have to stimulate your economy, and uh, if, if the stimulation doesn't work, you have to stimulate it more. And one way to do it is you lower interest rates to stimulate the economy. Well, that used to work all the time. It was a guaranteed winner every time. It, it's not working right now. Uh, and when you have a COVID, a virus, a worldwide global pandemic. That kind of mucks it up, and uh, it really screws with the economies of the world. And as long as the anti-vaxxers are out there, thank you, anti-vaxxers, we're going to have low interest rates for years to come because of you guys. Because you guys are going to guarantee that this virus is not going away. You're guaranteeing its survival. You're guaranteeing that every year we are going to have another wave of pandemic problems. You're going to guarantee that we can't travel where we want to travel, when we want to travel. You're going to guarantee that many, many people are going to die who get this thing from someone who didn't vax. Even though that person didn't know they had it, uh, they had the disease, they didn't know they had it, they were anti-vaxxers, and they've spread it to 100 people all during the month until they became ill or they fully recovered. They never felt a symptom. And uh, uh, these people are super superheroes. They're, they're the ones who get the disease and don't get ill. Yep, they're, they're great, except that they infected 100, 200, 300 people in the month that they were battling this thing. Uh, and out of all those folks, uh, they've infected hundreds and hundreds of people, and they infected hundreds and hundreds of people. And there are your casualties in the hospital. There are your victims, and there are your permanently scarred uh, people out there. And uh, you've guaranteed the economy will not run on eight cylinders It'll only run on five and a half to six cylinders. You've guaranteed cheap, cheap interest rates because regulators are just befuddled as to how do we keep this, get this economy going and how can we get it started? And um, there are those who are going to realize, uh, uh, I can't travel to Europe. I can't travel to Asia. I can't travel to Australia. I can't go on a cruise ship. I can't go see uh, Disney World. I can't do that. And that means a certain percentage of the economy is not available for the economy to enjoy, which means that you will have... Uh, unemployment scenarios that are shaky. You're going to have factory production numbers that are shaky. You're not going to have economies running at full scale. And that means uh, uh, that means uh, uh, very, very inconsistent performances. There'll be winners and there'll be losers. And the winners will be the stay-at-home uh, entrepreneurs, the corporations that can work it out with their employees to have them work from home, the corporations that can make money where people don't go to the office all the time and travel as much, like the Amazons, uh, like Apples, App Apple will win whether you're mobile or not. But if you're not mobile and you need this to work, you need your laptop and you need your iPad to work from home, Apple wins. Uh, 
But if you are, uh, you know, Joe's uh, bed and breakfast, or if you're uh, the Marriott in downtown New York, uh, charging 500 a night and up to the business community, you're the losers because they're not coming. Uh, they're the uh, business travel will not recover. Airlines will suffer. Overall, they will suffer. They'll they'll try to make a go of it with casual travel, but unfortunately, all of us sitting in the back of the airplane, that only covers the basic costs of the airplane. The profit is made by the folks in the front of the plane. And there are none there uh, because those folks are not going to be traveling in a cesspool of an aircraft with a whole bunch of super spreaders sitting in that thing. Are you out of your mind? If you've got any money whatsoever, you're traveling in a private jet. You will, you will travel less. And when you travel, you will travel privately. You will not put yourself in that situation. Uh, I can see a lot of people who will not travel knowing that when they get to the gate, and they're waiting for the call to get in the airplane. They have to walk down that long corridor and then get into that aircraft and sit in that thing for three, four, five, six hours. They're not going. Not no, knowing that, knowing what we know, the super spreaders are among us who will not vaccinate. Um, are you going to put yourself in that position? Are you can put your children in that position. You're going to go with your kids to Disneyland in California with a with a three hour flight. Um, with your children not vaccinated because they haven't got the vaccination thing yet, you're going to put your kids in that position? I don't see very mother, very many mothers going to allow that. Um, yeah, I see a whole new world happening here, um, and it's an unfortunate situation. It's a world that we probably don't want to be part of, uh, and it's a world that is uh, uh, frustrating to be part of, uh, that we have to monitor, uh, but I'm uh, I'm not all that optimistic that uh, that the stupid people out there are going to get vaccinated because if you're not vaccinated, you're an idiot. You are an idiot. And you are also potentially um, the enemy. Um, you are the problem. Um, you don't want to be the problem. I know you don't want to hurt anybody, but you're hurting people. You're doing it because you're selfish. And by being selfish, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, it really is a pathetic situation to be in uh, where the I is greater than the we. And uh, there you have it. That's uh, today's world in a nutshell as I see it. Hopefully it'll change later today or tomorrow. But I don't know. I'm just an old man ranting away. Uh, frustrated as frustrated as can be. I want to travel so badly. Uh, I'm of the age now where, hey, I'm 65. It's time to go. It's time to be out there. Uh, I can't travel when I'm 80, 85. I know it. I know I can't. There's no way I will be able to anymore. Physically, it will be impossible. But right now, I could do it, and I'd sure love to be doing it. But right now, I can't. I, my own country won't let me get in my car and drive to the United States, and the U.S. won't let me come in with a car. You cannot come in to the freest country in the world. Uh, even though you're fully vaccinated, you cannot come in here. How, how amazing is that? Americans can start coming in here on the 9th of August, but that might change at any minute. Because uh, the variant problems, I'm not sure if that gonna, that's going to go through. But at the moment, it's okay. But um, this is pathetic that between this, these two countries that we have, the, 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 the closest relationship that we have with each other, Canada and the United States, we're buds. Uh, we, we have so many shared values and we have so many shared objectives and we have so many relatives on each side of the border. Uh, we have so much, uh, uh, you know, so many connections on each other. We can't even intermingle with each other um, because of the anti-vaxxers now. Now it's the anti-vaxxers that are holding it up. It's not the, not the disease. The disease isn't the problem anymore. It's the availability of the disease to find willing hosts. And there are willing hosts willing to host the disease because they're thinking that they're immune from it. And it's just not true. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And it's disappointing. And um, what am I going to do? Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, there it is. Um, ha! Such fun, kids. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, what a happy day. Um, I'm looking for a better day today than yesterday. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for a higher market today than yesterday. Are we going to get it? That is the question. We have a 91-point gain, I think, on the pre-market. Let me refresh my uh, my thing here. Yeah, it's still sitting down here. This this Dow was uh, really on a roll this morning. It was on a real good run this morning, and then it just stopped dead. It fell off a cliff, and the Dow really backed off. Um, S&P up 9 and Nasdaq up 32. They're still positive, but not as positive as it looked like. I thought today that the Dow had a shot at hitting another new all-time high until the word came out that Gensler 
is going to have a speech about crypto. <laughs> that could retard things a little bit. Uh, will that hurt our stocks, the ones that we follow the most? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not so sure about that. We're 14 minutes away from the opening. We're going to find out here in a little while just what's going on. Um, the oil market is under pressure. It's now down $1.96 uh, to 6930 under 70 bucks a barrel again. Um, and it will continue to go lower. Because the talk now, the dominant talk now, is that the Chinese economy, which is already faltering, and maybe some folks who were listening to me a couple of weeks ago talking about don't buy Chinese, um, maybe this is going to falter even further. Um, I can tell you that if the Chinese economy were to falter by 5%, 10%, oil would be 40 bucks a barrel. Uh, gas in your neighborhood would be a buck fifty to $2 a gallon in where you are in the U.S. easily. Uh, you would see gas prices plunge. Uh, so much would be available because it wouldn't be necessary or needed. Now, that's another story uh, for another day. But uh, yeah, it's under pressure here uh, because of the Chinese uh, uh, demand situation. It might be much, much lower. going to be quite interesting to see how this plays out. Anyway, there you go. SoFi right now is up 22 cents to 15.95. Um, we were at 15.80 a little while ago. Now we're back to 15.95 on 151,000 pre-market trading. We're opening up here in about 13 minutes. I'm very happy to see that. Matterport right now is 1591. It's still up three cents. Got as high as 1610 this morning, but only 4,000 traded. So it's a little early to tell how that's going to do. Uh, what else is going on? The old IBM uh, up 33 cents to 4175. Uh, GameStop right now is sitting at 157.10. It's only down 55 cents. There's nothing going on on, on GameStop at the moment. Uh, Sixtera. Uh, six Terra. I, I don't know what to make of Six Terra. It's uh, uh, frustrating. Um, I don't know why there isn't any news. Uh, I don't know how this is going. Um, uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for any, 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 anything from anybody. Uh, no idea. Intel is up 28 cents today. I mean, hey, uh, that's going okay. Uh, I guess we'll take that. Ha! I don't know, folks. Um, it is. It is what it is. Uh, we have to deal with the markets. Um, AMC down seven cents to thirty five thirteen. I just got uh, about oh about an hour ago or an hour and a half ago. I started working on my um, class uh, number seven lesson number seven. Uh, this is a class that we did this past Saturday. Lesson number eight, which was Sunday's class, is coming. Uh, lesson number seven has been edited, and I'm getting ready to upload it to the website, which will be done after this show. So after this show this morning, I will finish uploading class number seven to uh, stockmarketswithbruce.ca and if you want to watch that class that we had on Saturday we talked about writing put contracts and I threw in some examples specific examples on stocks that we follow uh, like GameStop and IBM and Apple and others um, on how you can write put contracts strategies to write put contracts the ups the downs and everything else and um, I was watching it this morning. I was just kind of seeing how the how the edit looked, and um, I was uh, I was guilty actually of watching myself for like five minutes. <laughs> I found myself rather interesting. <laughs> I'm watching myself right on my on my whiteboard. Um, I was talking about GameStop put options, and I was showing off uh, the, the the various put options you could write, and what what you'd get for them, and then what the risk factors were, how much money you could make. Um, and then I wrote a series, another series of put options, another, another example of another series of put options showing this very conservative strategy where you can make money from put options as they deteriorate in value time. And, um, um, I, I just went, oh, this is a great idea. <laughs> so anyway, I will upload that, that class. Uh, it's two hours, two hours on writing put options. Uh, you, you think this is a quick little two minute video? Think again. This is complicated, but it is very good complicated if you study it, and it is very lucrative complicated. And I mean, when I mean complicated, I guess I shouldn't say complicated like like you you might think. It's it's in depth, and and because I'm showing off uh, not just GameStop, but I'm showing off Apple. I think I showed off uh, IBM. I, I may have, I think I showed off some other stocks. Um, I really went into a number of scenarios and I had a lot of questions, which I was happy to address to, to kind of help you folks out. Those of you who, who were here for the class, you're probably doing this right now. You are writing puts already as I'm sitting here or have been. Um, anyway, it's going to be, um, 
I think you're going to like it. And uh, if you enjoy the, uh, enjoy, uh, you, you want to check out this class, it'll cost you a hundred bucks to watch this video as many times as you want. That first hundred dollars you invest in yourself to watch this video, you'll get that back so fast. Uh, just on GameStop, I think one of the examples I was showing off, you'll get that back in one day. I, I think you were, I think you were generating a dollar a day per share uh, for every day you wrote the put. And so in one day, there's your hundred bucks. Um, and I was showing five and 10 and 15 and 20 day contracts um, that you could write. Uh, so you bring in anywhere from, you know, a buck a day uh, for five days or a buck a day for 20 days. Anyway, um, check it out if you if you dare. Um, tomorrow, uh, we should have uploaded uh, lesson number eight, where I am talking about writing um, credit put spreads, credit call spreads, the kind of transactions where you sell a contract for one price, right buy a contract for a lower price you end up with a credit in your account and that's what you're looking to score on this deal and time is your friend as the clock winds down these contracts just turn, turn to zero to turn into dust and you keep the change and thank you very much um there's a whole bunch of examples of that too and uh, that one will be uploaded tomorrow so we've got a couple of really cool classes coming up for you to take a look at if you like and I think you're going to learn a ton about all of that. All right. Um, welcome all to the show. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you could make it. Glad you could join me for another fun day uh, on the markets. Listen to another rant and rave by your favorite uncle, Uncle Bruce. So far now at 1593, we are six, seven minutes away from opening this thing up. Uh, I want to thank you all for, for popping in here. Um, I'm going to say goodbye to my uh, to my non-members and uh, open up the chat to members only. Uh, please consider becoming a member of this channel if you if you enjoy uh, hanging out here. If you like to make commentary from time to time and share some thoughts with us, uh, we love having you. Um, again, we'll uh, we'll uh, uh, always welcome you in. With the, those of you who are members, uh, there are benefits for being a member. Uh, one of which, of course, is commenting on the show. Number one is another one is, of course, getting alerts from time to time when uh, when there are alerts for you to to be aware of regarding stocks that we follow and or a new stock that I perhaps uh, want to add to my favorite list. You'll get an advance warning on that. Um, you'll also get first dibs at the next series of classes that we're uh, going to run out. Um, and you'll be uh, given first rights to uh, book a book a table, book a seat at uh, at our live at our live classes again thank you all for uh being part of this channel and and being part of this uh telecast love having you here and peace out everybody who is not a member uh please stick around and enjoy the show if you want to make a comment you can always do a super chat um but otherwise uh members only here we are thank you uh those of you who are here and uh, it's nice to have you uh joining me today um and you were a little better this last couple of days the markets are just a tad better uh, we're seeing uh, just a little bit, uh, a little bit of improvement of some of our stocks, and uh, and I'm happy about that. Uh, and uh, uh, SoFi 1593, I'm happy to see uh, you know trading range here. Uh, sure beats uh, what we were doing a week or two ago in the 14s or so. Uh, that's a nice little change. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I think that that, that SoFi is just going to continue to inch up higher. Um, it might be 40, 50 cents a day, but uh, I think we're just going to creep higher, creep higher because the selling wave has come and gone. Whatever selling wave came in is, is over two weeks ago. We have been cratering down here now in this neighborhood. We have been in between, roughly between, say, uh, uh, $16 a share and the high, uh, high well, low 14s for about three weeks now. And uh, we've gone through this, uh, uh, this grind uh, for quite a while, and and it's almost over. If we can break the 1750 neighborhood, we are on our way to higher highs. Uh, that is my my take on it. Um, on SoFi, if we break 1750, we go to higher highs, um, just because we'll have uh, bought uh, eaten up all the selling that came through. Uh, <clears throat> anyone who wanted out has now been able to get out of Dodge. They're out of the way and. Uh, the shares have have no resistance anymore. And uh, not that I say there won't be a single seller of stock, but 
the the whatever number of shares came up for sale have been absorbed by the market and the stock did not go below the 14 level really it really didn't and here we are now at 1593 pushing 16 around like butter uh hot knife through soft butter i think we're going to broke break it out and um uh, the next assault will be 17 1750 and that technically will be the breakout point <clears throat> if we break into the 18 neighborhood uh, then it's clear sailing to 2022 and 24. So, uh, and this is all before this new, this press conference and this uh, this conference call, the earnings call that's coming up, I think on the 12th of, uh, of August. So we are now, what, nine days away from that. And so in the next, you know, week and a half, <clears throat> could we get to the 18 level? Yes, we could. Um, could we break out from that? We could. Um, will we go back to $13 a share? I don't think so. I, I don't think that's in the cards now. I think we've got uh, I think we've got uh, better days ahead on SoFi. Anyway, we're down to two minutes before we open for trading. <clears throat> GameStop right now one fifty six ninety five down seventy cents on the uh, on the morning uh, quote pre market uh, quote at this point in time uh, is what I see. I see the Dow up fifty eight points, still uh, under pressure. S and P up seven. I see Nasdaq up thirty two. So they're still positive, <clears throat> but they're not as positive <clears throat> as they were about 35, 40 minutes ago before I started my rant. Uh, the stock, uh, the market really backed off in pre-market when we heard about Gensler looking to talk about crypto. And I can tell you, this is a leak that was made on purpose by the Gensler people. The people. This was not um, some, some crafty reporter digging up information that uh, you know was top secret. This is news they wanted to leak out. This is info they wanted to get out into the street and uh, Brit, uh, uh, Bitcoin is down $433. Um, uh, Ethereum is down 85 Ripple is off uh, uh, 2%. Um, uh, all the cryptos are more or less negative at this point, more or less. We're noticing that the U.S. 10-year is under pressure. It's at 1.17%. It is a well under 1.19, which was a support level. That has been breached. And uh, we're now looking at the uh, U.S. 10-year falling. Uh, we've got the German 10-year down point negative 0.479. Uh, yesterday, day before yesterday, uh, the Germany 30-year note, uh, I think it was yesterday morning, the Germany 30-year went negative again. Uh, so now Germany will lend you money. Well, wait, let me re rephrase that. You can now lend Germany money, all right? You can lend Germany money for 30 years and they will charge you interest every year if you do it. Does that make sense? Are you getting it? You give Germany your money now for 30 years to use in government spending, whatever it wants, and they will pay you back in 30 years exactly how much you gave them, but every year you have to give them money for that to keep going. So you pay them to lend them money. You getting it? That's how bad the economy is. When governments can actually demand money from you to lend them money. <laughs> That's how upside down this world is. Uh, welcome to the upside down world in which we live. It is wild. It is wacky. It is insanity. The Americans, unfortunately, uh, America, which you know, admittedly is the largest economy in the world, actually has to pay. American government has to pay 1.17% interest for 10 years, uh, it's incredible, Germans don't. The Italians are only paying 0.57 for a 10 year note, that's half what the Americans pay. Spain pays 0.23. The Spanish only pay 20% of the interest rate that America pays to borrow money for 10 years. Hello, uh, the Spanish, really? Spain only has to pay 0.2 what? Are, are you, how screwed up is this? Uh, the United Kingdom has to pay 0.003% for 10 year money. The United Kingdom. Japan has to pay 0.01%. That's one tenth of 1% interest for 10 years. America has to pay much higher than that. That's ridiculous. America has to pay 1.17. That's that's insanity. Uh, what, is, what is that? The, the United Kingdom. I'm sorry, United Kingdom. I, I misread this. The UK has to pay 0.5, half a point. Uh, Spain, 0.2. Italian, 0.5. Germans, negative 0.4. 
0.7, America 1.1. America is the one getting ripped off here. Uh, American taxpayers are being ripped off by the rest of the world where Americans are being asked to pay 1.17% interest for 10-year money where the rest of the world can get, get it for free or, or, or negative or get it for one, one half of 1%. <laughs> I, I laugh when I read these numbers. It's just insanity. Uh, it's insane. Anyway, welcome back to the show. I'm glad you're here. We're open. We're open. Let's talk about the opening. Oh, my gosh, the opening. Uh, lordy, lordy, Lou. Uh, Robin Hood, 3777. It's trying to get to 38. I predict today it will break $38 a share. I don't know by how much, but Robin Hood is going to try to hit $38 a share. I I. I wouldn't touch this with a 10-foot cattle front, not even close. Uh, so far, 1585 is the first uh, opening salvo quote that I'm noticing here. It was as low as 1577, as high as 1605. It's now 1580-ish, so it's up 7 cents. It's on 546,000 shares. It will sort itself out, but it will hopefully go higher. GameStop, 15320. Forget the pre-market at 157. Forget the pre-market at 156. 153 on the opening trade. Um, uh, down uh, 445 on 134,000 shares. That's what I'm seeing at the moment. We'll see if that lasts. Uh, ATIP uh, showing a 371 last trade, roughly 370, down four or five cents on 68,000 shares. Uh, we've got AMC down 57 cents. We have Matterport up eight to 1596. Uh, 37,000 volume. Uh, we have 23andMe up a dime. Can you handle the richness? The richness of 23andMe as it's coming back up a dime again to 833 on 61,000. Come on, 23andMe. You know you can do better than that. Uh, we've got, uh, what else? Uh, I'm looking for any other openings. So VACQ on 37,000 shares up three cents. We have, uh, let's see if I get my phone to work, a six, a, a, a six tera. Uh, Sex Terra at 884, down three cents. Uh, just down three. It was down 20 something on the pre market, but I didn't think that was real. I was right. 14,000 traded so far. We're just down three cents at 884. Those are the opening first salvos. IBM is up 55 cents at 141.94, trying to get 142. Um, we'll see if that uh, has a better day or not. It would be nice to see IBM back to 145. Uh, but what can I tell you? Dow is up 46 now, um, uh, holding a gain of 46. S&P is up 6, and NASDAQ is up 10. So it's a, s a soft opening. It's positive, but it's positive. It's soft across the board. We're down 177 a barrel on oil, 69.49. Oil will go lower, not higher. There is oil everywhere, uh, everywhere, uh, too much oil everywhere uh do not get hoodwinked by these analysts saying oh it's going to 90 bucks a barrel it's not going to 90 bucks a barrel uh no 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 too many third world countries part of opec that are way too inefficient and have too many bribes to pay off they can't uh, they they cannot discipline themselves not to produce this stuff they they are sloshing in it they uh, have bills uh, they have ious to dictators and to warlords that they have to pay off to keep their population suppressed. No, no, no. The oil isn't going anywhere. Okay. Um, that just, just so you know. Um, what a nasty man he is today. Bruce is so nasty. A uh, SoFi up 19 cents now to 1592. <laughs> On my first seven quotes, uh, Robin Hood, SoFi, GameStop, ATIP, AMC, Matterport, uh, they're all red except for SoFi. Uh, 23 me is unchanged and fifth wall is up a penny. I've got a couple of little greenies here, but oh, it's all red this morning. But you yeah, know, Matterport's down a penny. I mean, okay. Uh, I can handle that. ATIP's down four cents. Okay. If you're going to start down four cents, okay. <laughs> uh, SoFi up 23 now. 1596 on your SoFi, kids. Uh, definitely improving. Uh, the high of the day, 1605 on the initial opening. 1597 now. Looks like SoFi is going to go higher. And I'm very, uh, very happy about that. I'm not surprised because uh, it's oversold. And it should go higher. It should make you a lot of money. Uh, you deserve everything you get out of this thing. The ATIP, uh, 370. Um, I'm looking for the $4 breakout um, at, at the very least. But I'm also, I would really like to hear or, 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 or hear something about ATIP from some kind of a source that is um, 
uh, calm and objective. Um, I'm not looking for a screaming, uh, uh, panic-driven uh, blogger who's trying to tell me the end of the world is here because ATIP missed their numbers by $10 million from 170 to 160 and then tell me the world is over. I, I'm not interested in hearing this crap. I want to hear about the plan that ATIP has long term. I want to hear ATIP's three year, five year, and 10 year game plan. There is a game plan. You went public for a reason. The reason ATIP went public, I think, is to expand their business to become larger. And that meant, that means in my book, to open new clinics or to acquire existing clinics and open new clinics simultaneously. Like McDonald's, you're just gonna keep opening up new franchises. Like Starbucks, you're opening new franchises. Now, ATIP could theoretically take over existing clinics, but it might be that they open new clinics themselves in strip mall type locations, low rent locations, and put out of business inefficient clinics that are sitting inside expensive hospital scenarios. And, and that could be the, this could be the new wave of physiotherapy. But it could well be that ATIP has figured out the end game for physiotherapy will be that in 10 years, 80% of all physiotherapy will take place outside of a hospital setting where rents are much lower, overheads are much lower. And uh, it's easier for the customer to get there uh, because of you know, free parking and parking lots, uh, public transit available. Uh, it'll be easier for staff to get to work. It'll be easier and cheaper for staff to get to the office. You don't have to pay parking rates at hospital parking lots, all this kind of stuff. Um, I kind of get the impression that, that ATIP might be on the cutting edge of figuring out that physiotherapy will go the way of the strip mall kind, and I use that just as an expression, strip mall location, low overhead rent locations uh, where their services will, will eventually be expanded out. It wouldn't surprise me that they offer sports massages and other treatments. Uh, maybe they start adding acupuncture centers inside ATIP centers. They'll just open it up to additional medical services, all under a much lower overhead scenario and in a what we call a safe area, an area where high traffic, uh, uh, strip mall location, where there's a lot of traffic in and out, well lit, uh, um, you know, everything good. Um, maybe that's the future and they figured it out and there are 38,000 places you can go now for physiotherapy in America and they have 900 of them. And I'm thinking, yeah, they're looking at getting half of them. They're going to go to 15,000 locations over 10 years, uh, become the dominant player in physiotherapy. They will be the number one customer for insurance companies to send customers to. Um, and that's where Medicaid and Medicare will send most of its clients to as well. And ATIP will have the political clout and they will have the lobbyists in Washington to ensure that when they bring patients in under all these programs, they make money. And that's uh, where I think this is going. And that's why ATIP, I think, is a uh, an interesting play. Uh, unfortunately, they went public at 10 bucks a share with the SPAC, and we're sitting at 373. So that's the unfortunate part. The good news is if you've got some dry powder, this is a bargain of bargains. This, this thing will be a $20 stock. Not this week, not this month, not this quarter, but this company has upside. Believe it or not, it has upside. It's at 373. You are going in at under book value. In my humble opinion, you're buying this stuff for less than it's worth. Just saying, but you've got to have a, an outlook a little longer. Up. It wasn't my intention to have ATIP uh, go to 373. <laughs> I wasn't calling on that. But the market overreacted, and I believe that a whole bunch of flippers were put into this stock at 10 bucks a share by the underwriters. The absolute wrong investors bought this stock at 10 bucks a share. But again, to be fair to ATIP, when this company went public before it became ATIP, my hunch is that what we had here, um, hang on one second, let me just double check something. Um, where am I? Here we go. Uh, before it became ATIP, um, the the uh, 
the ATI, uh, yeah, the ATI physical therapy. Um, it was sold as a hot SPAC idea that the thinking was, oh yeah, this is a hot SPAC. And uh, it, you know, SPACs do nothing but triple and quadruple right away. And I think a lot of people bought this thing thinking that they had a hot flip on their hands without knowing what they were getting, which was ATIP physical therapy centers. Uh, until And then when they announced it, uh, they announced it as ATIP physical therapy centers, uh, people were still looking for, as was I, a reasonable up move into the $15, $20 neighborhood just on the fact that we have a legitimate business here that's been in business quite a while, being run by people who seem to know what they're doing. Uh, away we go. The problem is that what we have with ATIP, in my opinion, is um, the wrong investors who got in first, who got blown out, and they and they walked away in frustration, and they, they didn't see the payoff they got out. And the second problem with ATIP which they will fix, and they might have already done this, is uh, the senior staff running this company are not expert in running public companies. And the hope I have is that they have acquired and have been acquiring uh, expertise with regards to the investor relations department. And that I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, that these guys will have in place, in-house, in Chicago, a crack team of investor relations professionals who know what the hell they're doing with regards to issuing press releases for publicly traded companies and finding ways to put together promotion campaigns, awareness campaigns, whatever you want to put the word on. I call it promotion because that's I'm old school. We need a promoter to promote the hell out of this stock. That's what we need. But in today we call it awareness campaign professionals um, to build awareness of this company's vast potential. In other words, what I'm doing with you in plain English, they need in a sophisticated and uh, and uh, you know upper class kind of way uh so we need that nice lingo to talk about how wonderful this company is going to be down the road to as i say it get the stock up and uh we're at 379 up four and a half cents this thing needs to be promoted to the nth degree by stock promoters and uh we're not getting that or hadn't been getting it to this point 380 now on atip someone's listening to me hello buy 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 atip because when it gets promoted it will jump um but the market does not know what we're talking about because there are only 855 of you here. There aren't 85,500 of you here. I am an unknown commodity in the world of YouTube as a whole. And uh, that's why you know about it, but not the rest of the world. If you could kindly find a way to give me a thumbs up right now on this show to help this channel get exposed by YouTube on YouTube, you are doing yourselves a favor because everyone who finds us will hear all about ATIP and SoFi and GameStop and Matterport and 23andMe. I will keep talking about these companies because I like them. I like them a lot. And the more people who find out about this, these stocks, they'll figure out themselves, yeah, I did some due diligence on what that guy was talking about. And uh, he does rant about China, but you know, he does talk about this uh, ATIP stock and yeah, I kind of like it down here. I like gambling at 380 a share when everyone else gambled from 10 to 15 a share. I like this. And so those of you who are in already, get more of this stuff. If you can afford to average down, do it. Get this stuff, pick it up, put it away. You're going to make money, but um, you got to have faith. You got to have faith. We have 339 thumbs up. Some of you are listening to me. I appreciate it. Uh, help me out and get me some thumbs ups going here. Let's pop this market and let's get this uh, this channel rolling. And we'll go from there. Okay, there you have it. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All of you, ATIP is up a nickel. There you go. There's thumbs ups coming here for Bruce. Yay! We don't need Uncle Bruce exposing himself on YouTube, do we? Uh, ATIP is ripping. There you go, baby. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. 379 and a half. We're up four and a half cents on ATIP. Volume today, 231,000 shares. We're at the high of the day right now. Come on, ATIP. You know you can go much higher than this, and uh, it will. Uh, I'm thinking five and a half, six and a half as a preliminary, a preliminary number is where I think this is headed for once we stabilize out. We're still doing that. Um, but if they put together an, a, a, a group of... Uh, of uh, investor relations people, uh, they can run this thing to eight, nine bucks. First stop. Um, from there, start announcing your plans about expansion uh, because that is the secret to this company's success. It is not going to become a $25 stock 
with 900 locations improving their efficiencies by 5 or 10%. That is not going to do it. It will not hurt it. It'll get it to 10. It'll get it to 12, but it won't take it to 25 or 30 bucks a share. What will take this stock to 25, 30 bucks a share is the impression that we get in our heads. We get the impression that they are going to acquire and grow out their, their business. They're going to expand out. And if they do start acquiring ATIP uh, centers from other operators as they start to vend them in, Yes, that is one way to grow out, but you don't want to overpay for these places. What you really want is, uh, theoretically, I guess, <clears throat> you want to buy these centers uh, on the outside, these privately run centers. You want to buy them for maybe two to three years of their profit uh, going forward. So a PE multiple of two or three per center is what you want. So if there's, a, if there's an operator in a city with 10 locations, and they're making um, 150,000 a year profit per location. <clears throat> you want to buy each one combined. You want to buy them for that's a one and a half million dollar business profit business. You want to buy it for three million to four million dollars. That's what you want to do. You want to buy it, however, with stock, if if at all possible, uh, or you will do it with a bond offering. You will you will raise 200 million dollars at at two percent interest, three percent interest. You'll buy this one for four million you'll buy that one over there for three million you'll buy this one over here for three and a half million you'll assemble tens and tens and tens and ten and every month or so you pick up 10 or 20 or 30 more centers you just keep doing that and at the end of the year you've added 400 new centers you've bought them between two and three times pe multiple and you're adding millions of dollars a year in profits into your public company by acquiring these 10 units, 10 units, 5 units, 8 units, 16 units, all kinds of numbers. And then what's happening is your stock will not trade at two times earnings, three times. Your stock will trade at 20 times, 30 times, 50 times earnings because the street gets the impression, holy moly macaroni, these guys are increasing their counts, their centers by 50% a year with what they're building and what they're buying, they're growing at 50% a year in build-out, in growing out rates of locations. This is huge revenue increases coming in, and the efficiency factors will get better as they you know, efficient, make this whole thing under one roof. This is where the stock will trade 50 times earnings. So they will buy a center of a, a location of, say, 10 locations for $4 million, but it will trade on the market at $40 million. And so this is where your stock takes off. This is where you guys get rich because as a publicly traded corporation, it's now 389 going to 390, as a publicly traded company, it will trade at a multiple, but it will not trade at two and three multiple that you're buying assets, per, profit assets at, no, you, it will, you will trade at 10 times what you're paying for it. So a $4 million purchase is a $40 million add-on to market cap. A $3 million purchase over here is a $30 million add to market cap. Again and again and again and again. And after three or four years of this, you have a $50 stock generating mil billions in revenue. I mean, billions in revenue with millions and millions of dollars of, of profit. And they're issuing bonds to pay for it, not stock. They're not diluting the shareholders, but they could. They could theoretically say to these operators, well, you know what? Why don't you join our company? And we'll pay you $4 million. We'll give you $3 million in cash and a million in stock. Or we'll give you a, a million in ca cash and $3 million in stock. Um, and uh, you, may want, you may want to be a shareholder of our company because your asset is going to add dramatically to our value of our company. And we're going to add, you know, they may add a 50 center here, a 75 uh, physical therapy center out of Florida here. Who knows how many there are? I mean, there's 38,000 of them. Now, they can grow by 500 a year, 1,000 a year, 2,000 a year. They've got years and years and years of growth ahead of them to build out the largest single physical therapy operator in America where, where the billions will come in. There will be billions a month coming in because we are getting older and we need physical therapy no matter what's going on. So here we are, 391 a share. I've talked it up 16 cents all by myself. I'm telling you, what do I have to do around here to get this market going out there? Uh, 847 of you and me have moved this market 16 cents. That's how powerful we are just by me talking about this one little old stock for 15 minutes. We are gods.
really. I, I, you should, all of you should take a bow right now. And uh, I, I, I applaud all of you. Uh, we're all getting the world richer. We have made every single ATIP shareholder 15, 16 cents a share richer just by being here together. Just 847 of us. Just think if there were 84,000 of us here right now. Wow. Would we have power? Oh, my God. Can you imagine if I had 85,000 people here watching me and I said, I think you should buy ATIP right now. <laughs> and uh, 5,000 of you each tried to buy 500 shares. 250,000 shares of buying power. Just like that. Uh, that would be power. Yeah. Hit the thumbs up button and we'll get to that level. Yeah. Hit the thumbs up button to get to that level. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The more powerful we become, the more we are followed, the more power we have. And we can show off these inequities like ATIP trading at way too low a price. It's just that simple. It's all it requires. Uh, I, I don't know how much more I have to explain it. Uh, we're at 392 thumbs up. That's not enough. I appreciate the 395 thumbs ups we have right now, but really we should be over 500 right now uh, for the audience that we have here. Um, that's my personal opinion. 861 of you, that means 500 of you have not given me a thumbs up, which is not helping yourself. Uh, if you want to get richer, help me get bigger because um, I will talk these stocks. I will talk about them. Uh, these are underpriced issues. What can I say? Uh, SoFi, what's going on here? 1562 down 11 cents. I didn't give it permission to go down in price. Did you? I, what, what's this all about? Uh, the greatest online financial uh, banking system in the world, and it's uh, down uh, uh, 17 cents. Kapasa. What's going on here? I will say, however, something happened on New York because <laughs> the Dow is down 73 points. Uh, something happened in New York that New York did not like. And uh, we're off right now. Uh, seven, 80 points on the Dow. What is going on with the Dow? Um, Matt Saunders, thank you, buddy. Any thoughts on you clear secure? Uh, why are you clear secure? I have no idea what this is. Matt, I don't know what this means. Uh, is this a stock? Why are you is this a stock? I have no idea what this is. Uh, you're, you're, I need more help. You got to give me more info, buddy. Um, anyway, there you go. Um, GameStop volume, 725,000. Robinhood volume, 6.7 million. Now that's funny. <laughs> Robinhood is up at 39.66. It has broken the $38 barrier, the uh, initial underwriting barrier. So in theory, in theory, every single person that ever bought Robinhood is up right now because it's near its all-time high. In theory, everyone is making money on Robinhood right now. The, the, the company is garbage. Uh, the, the, the operation is garbage. They're losing money hand over fist. But it's a 39.56 market, and that is the, uh, the main thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't recommend the stock. <laughs> She clearly 1559 on SoFi. I have no idea why it went down. It got down to 1555. Um, the Dow is down 91, and uh, there must have been something said by somebody uh, regarding the Dow. Does anyone know anything about it? Did they pull a fast one on me? I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, anyway, uh, we are we are seeing. Uh, we're seeing something. Uh, is it the variant? Uh, I, I, I have no idea. The Dow was up 80 points uh, a minute into the opening. Uh, we're now down 90 right here. Uh, something happened somewhere uh, to somebody. Somebody said something. That's that's it. Somebody said something. And we're down. I'm going to take the look at the Dow 30 uh, stocks right now. Uh, the Dow 30 right here. Let's see who's doing what in the Dow. Uh, who's the loser uh, right now? The loser, Goldman Sachs. Um, wow. Goldman Sachs trading at, what's a 6.9 times earnings overpriced all of a sudden? Um, unbelievable. Uh, it's down uh, 540 a share. American Express down 375. Boeing down three bucks. McDonald's down 250. Uh, wow, all of a sudden bur burgers are overpriced. Walt Disney down 251. Visa down 244. JP Morgan down a buck and a half. Honeywell down a buck 50. I don't know. Uh, the big winners: Home Depot up three thirty-two, Walmart up a buck twenty-two, Procter and Gamble up a buck twenty. Mind you, uh, isn't it interesting that Home Depot and Walmart are two of America's largest importers of goods from China? Just so you know, they're the Dow winners today, as China is cracking down on businesses. Two of America's largest importers of Chinese-made product 
are leading the Dow higher today. How about that? What does that say about this economy? Johnson Johnson up 82, Salesforce up 79, United Health up 71, 3M up 63. IBM up 50 cents, Microsoft up 39. There's very few winners, about 10 winners, 20 losers. Goldman Sachs is the big one taking the biggest dump right now. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh kind of kind of goofy. Uh it's a, it's kind of it's kind of goofy. Uh I'm not used to being a impulsive loser says Austin. <laughs> Austin. <laughs> Uh, Bruce is very tone deaf. Uh, here you go. You ain't a loser until you sell. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Hood just has a huge following. I guess so. 39.16 is the price. Uh, the Dow down 88 right now. Um, we've got a 100 point fall. American Express, Goldman, share losses lead the Dow to a nearly 100 point fall. Uh, Costco, Kroger, Target, Walmart, Apple change mask policies as CDC warns about rise in Delta variant. That's because stupid people will not get vaccinated. And I will not stop saying it. Stupid people are not getting vaccinated. That is the truth. And this is the problem with the economy right now. Masks are back, unfortunately. Crazy. Got 100 more. Hey, Games at 152. It's 152.04 down $5. SoFi down 14 cents. ATIP up 12 to 387. Uh, AMC down a buck. Matterport uh, down 74 cents to 15.14. 23andMe down 23 and cents. Uh, Fifth Wall up down a penny. Vector down four. Sixtera down four cents. IBM up 74 cents to 42.16. Microsoft up 29 cents. Apple up 11. Tesla up 326. That's what I got going here. The cruise lines are lower. Royal Caribbean 73.06. I don't know who it was, but one of you have put contracts, and I hope you haven't done a thing. I hope you're just sitting on them. They're getting better and better and better every day you got them. This stock is going lower, $73 on Royal Caribbean. Um, Norwegian down 66, Carnival down 62 cents. Cruise lines are in a world of hurt, and it's going to get worse because if the stupid people don't get vaccinated, cruise lines could get shut down again. It could happen. I'm not exaggerating. It could happen. The CDC might shut them down again indefinitely, and that would cause unbearable problems for shareholders of these cruise lines. Not making this crap up. Amazon down 567, Facebook down two, Google down seventeen dollars. Um, wow, unbelievable. Uh, Goldman Sachs down six dollars fourteen cents uh, right here, at, trading at six point eight times earnings, making. Endless money. I mean, piss pots of money. Stocks down, 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 down. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. It is wild. It's wacky and it's stupid. It's a bizarre world in which we live. Disney down two ninety. Um, yeah. What a what a what a market. What a market. This is wild. Uh, in all my years of uh, being around, I have not seen such a bizarre world in the stock market. It is really backwards. Uh, there are absolute bargains out there and then there's the silliness i just i just am amazed but then there are stupid people amongst us so what are you going to do uh, intel down 39 cents micron up 78 cents uh doordash up a buck 90 i can see why uh people are going to order from home uh they're not going to go out yeah if you have to wear a mask to go into a fast food restaurant why don't you just order your food delivered uh yeah why why bother going out are you going to risk yourself your family your children i don't think so uh, 38.95 on Robinhood. SoFi um, down 18 now to 15.55. Uh, the low of the day, 15.51 on SoFi. Uh, GameStop down 5.64. ATIP is still up 14 cents. Uh, AMC down to 33.96. Matterport down 70 cents. Took quite the dump here. Low of 15.06, which is the current price right now. Down 82 cents. I don't know if Matterport said anything. Did they say anything? Anybody hear anything? I haven't heard anything. Matterport, uh, what did you do, Ray? What did you do, uh, Matterport? What is the story on the Matterport? How come Kapasa, why is it off? Uh, looking for any kind of renouncement, any kind of news. Uh, I don't have anything. I don't see anything. Um, there's a reason it's off, I guess. I don't know. Matterport volume, uh, 286,000. It's not like there's a million shares for sale here. Something's going on in Matterport. Uh, 1521 a share right now, down 67 cents. Low of the day, 1506. It's come back 15 cents so far. 
Uh, very weird action on that one. Matterport, no idea. SoFi, 1550. Looks like it is a little better than the low of the day. Uh, people are worrying about the COVID. Uh, I keep seeing these highlights coming up. COVID worries, COVID worries, COVID worries. Um, Matterport, 1512. And SoFi, 1549. Uh, SoFi, uh, low of the day now on SoFi has been uh, 1547. This is the low of the day. We're down 25 cents on our SoFi. Down 96 on the Dow, down 7.5 on S&P. NASDAQ down 46. The Dow just jumped 20 points. We're still down 70 at the moment. There it is. U.S. factory orders climb 0.8% in June. That's a breaking headline story that might help the market a little bit. It might not. Um, let's see. Um, let's see what's going on here. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I'm starting to doubt your picks, bro. Well, uh, you know, um, I can't pick the virus, so, you know. It is what it is, but if you've got the, uh, if you're an investor, you're not going to let this get to you. If you're an investor, really. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, snapped up some more GameStop, and um, and uh, let's see, let's see, let's see what else is going on. Uh, preach, Bruce, preach. <laughs> My ATIP call, November ten dollar strike. What do I do? What do I do? Um, let's see. Um, and uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uh, some folks just aren't happy. It just is the way it is. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. You're allowed to be unhappy. Just make money. Uh, just stick around and make money. That's the key here. Uh, let's see, let's see, uh, let's see. Don't call people stupid. Please don't do that. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, well, you know, there it is. Uh, <laughs> oh, my. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm not, I'm no longer being nice to anti-vaxxers, says Michael. Uh, public health is not being rude. I hear you there. Uh, what's up with ME? Uh, what is up with ME? Uh, where are we at right now? MBE down 28 cents to 7.95 again. Uh, where are we at with the Dow? Down 53. We're a little better. Uh, S&P down five. Nasdaq down 41. Uh, we've got SoFi at 15.50 a share. Uh, 15.51 uh, bouncing off the low. We have GameStop down six bucks at 151.50. We have ATIP up 11 cents to 3.86. We have AMC down a buck 24. Matterport down a dollar three now to 14.85. That is near the low of the day. I have no reasoning for it. Uh, it's just doing what it's doing. ME down 28 cents. We've got Fifth Wall down a nickel. We've got uh, Vector down four cents. We have Navsite up a penny. We have Sixtera down three. So those shares are, are hardly moving at all. We have IBM up $1.37 to 142.79. Uh, we have Microsoft up six cents. Apple up 22. Tesla up 291, holding a lot of those gains that they've had lately. Crew stocks under pressure, uh, all down significantly um, as the Delta variant is having its effect on the travel sector. No question about it. Uh, who? Let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah, I think hey, Cap Carter, you're right. Uh, I think everyone who wants the vaccine has gotten it. They've been giving it away free for months. Uh, the American taxpayer, the Canadian taxpayer, the European taxpayer have funded the massive uh, vaccination of its population for free. Well, it's free in a way. We're paying for it, but it, we're paying for it invisibly through taxation. Um, and yet we're not taking advantage of the free giveaway. Uh, the gift of life is being ignored. And there are people in intensive care units going, I should have taken this vaccine when I had the chance. It's it's amazing. It's a, a heartbreaking stories. Uh, what are you going to do? Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Continuing on. Uh, Zin Zinio. Zenio, uh, thank you for becoming a member. Nice to have you here. Um, let's go. Uh, meanwhile, Robinhood is up 5%. That's right. It's $39.50, up $1.82. Uh, the company that uh, stopped you from trading your, your GameStop shares, they wouldn't allow you to trade AMC. You couldn't trade a bunch of other stocks. They went public anyway, and they're up in price. And there's Wall Street thumbing their nose at you right now, saying we'd rather push this stock to higher levels 
than to uh, to talk to you guys about the uh, reasonableness of buying GameStop as it converts into an e-commerce company. We there you have it. There's dumb money and there's smart money and then there's the the big money. It's amazing, amazing on what's going on here. Anyway, there it is. Uh, yep, a few bad weeks in the market. Everyone is sour. That's what happens. Hey, Bruce, long-time viewer, first-time sub. Love your channel. Love your advice. Thank you for sharing great information. It's just plain English. Thank you uh, very much. I really appreciate it. It's the stock market in plain English, and sometimes you don't like it. You're not going to like the plain English because it is. It's plain English. I'm not here to sugarcoat the world for you. I'm here to tell you what's going on, and it's ugly. What's happening is ugly out there. And uh, it ain't pretty. And <laughs> you got to wake up to that reality. It ain't pretty right now. The Dow is only off 64 points. It's not a big drop off. It's not the end of the world. But we were up 80, 100 points to start the day. And now we're down 60. What happened? What, what would cause such a violent reaction? Well, the realization that uh, things aren't going too well. There's stuff under the surface that's not looking good. And it's this uh, variant. This variant is ugly. Um, man, unbelievable. Uh, what can I tell you? Um, thank you. Uh, what can I say? Um, the only ugly thing are these picks. <laughs> yeah, like my stocks are the only ones going down. No one else's are going down. Okay, whatever. Uh, GameStop down seven. ATIP up a dime. Um, yep, we're here we are. Here we are. IBM up a dollar forty nine. The Dow down 67. Uh, we're going negative now on Microsoft and Apple and Tesla. They're all turning red. The markets are turning red across the board here. Uh, Google off 21 bucks. Facebook down three. Uh, JP Morgan down 96 cents. Uh, Goldman down only 430. It was down seven, so it's a little better. Still going negative on the dial on the markets as the markets are beginning to realize this uh, this variant thing is bad for business. Um, yeah, it's it's bad for business, and I'm not happy about it. I'm not proud of it. I'm just telling you what's going on. Um, it is what it is. All right. 23 me down 27 cents. Matterport down 74. Touched a low of uh, uh, 1482. Matterport touched 1482. It's now come back 32 cents to 1514. Um, still showing a loss of 74 cents on 391,000 shares. I have no idea why it's done this. AMC, same thing. It dropped off to 33.45, now 33.78. Uh, had a bit of a bounce back, but it's bounced down again uh, on 14.9 million. ATIP holding a gain here. ATIP staying up um, 11 cents, uh, 3.86 a share. So oversold. Uh, GameStop did touch a low of 149. It's now 150.26. We've got uh, SoFi now at 15.32, low of the day 15.28, so we're bounced off four cents at the moment, 2.4 million shares. We're now at 15.33 on SoFi. The Dow still negative, down 85 points. S&P down 12, NASDAQ down 81. U.S. factory orders increased 1.5% in June. That was a positive. Uh, doesn't appear to be helping the market in a dramatic way at this moment in time. We've got SoFi at 1530 a share, low of 1528. Uh, we're still under pressure, down 40 cents a share on SoFi at this moment. So we have we have a, across the board selling coming in here all over the place. Um, IBM still holding a gain, believe it or not, a dollar seventy four gain to 143.16, defying the market, as is Home Depot, up 339 going the up direction as the rest of the market looks to be under pressure. There is a sea of red everywhere. Uh, Target is up three. Costco's up 245. Walmart's up $1.30. I'm surprised that the retailers are positive when they just announced all of them are going into a mask, mandatory mask policy. Amazing. Cisco down a penny. Nvidia down a dollar. Um, Walt Disney down three and a half. Um, American Airlines down 69 cents to 1937. Uh, so there's pressure there, no question about it. It is what it is. Um, Robinhood 38.91. It's above the price. It reached 39.99 ever so briefly, uh, almost a two dollar gain from the issuance of stock at 38. Uh, amazing that Robinhood. I'm amazed it's a, it's actually up. I'm amazed it's actually over the 38 dollar price. 
Um, I just don't. Uh, I just don't believe in this stock. I believe the company's way overpriced. Uh, what's that, Jen? I'm amazed they're still in business. She's amazed they're still in business. How did the SEC not close? Them? How did the SEC not close them down? Exactly. They stopped the free trade. That's, that's right. That's right. Uh, in our day, they'd have been out of business by now. They would have been long gone. Anyway, yeah. Don't know what to make of it. Um, AB is saying, hey, Bruce, a CYXT warrants are going for about a buck 81, and it says the warrants become good at 1150. Uh, is there a way to calculate the warrant price if the stock is, say, 20 or 30? Well, if the stock is 20 bucks, the warrants would have an 850 value per warrant, book value, like an option would, uh, plus any time on top of that. And so there's a, there's a strong premium being paid right now on these warrants. As far as I last saw, they were a buck eighty a piece or something like that. I, I'm I'm shocked. I I I am uh, I am stumped as to why they're trading at one eighty five a piece. Um, I really am. If any of you have these, um, you know, you, I don't know what to make of it. I, I don't understand how a warrant that is out of the money as far as it is, with the Sextera stock now, a Sextera sitting at eight eighty four. It's a you know three. What is it? Three two seventy out of the money. Um, one eighty five premium, but it is. That's what they're trading at. Uh, they've been anywhere from one twenty to three fifty a piece in the in the fifty two week history. So they've been a lot higher than this. Uh, there are people prepared to pay a buck eighty five for a long term warrant on Sextera. You could directly just sell them, take the money. Um, that's about sixty cents for every unit that you originally acquired. Uh, but you know, it's it's money against your position uh, to to lessen your cost. But you could hold it uh, if six Terra pops up a little bit. It would be nice if it would pop up a little bit. But it's at eight eighty four right now. But if the shares got back to ten, these would be a dollar fifty out of the money. Maybe they're two fifty. Maybe they'll be two sixty. Uh, you could you know you could hold and hold and wait and 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 see what they do. But I'm I'm not sure what to make of it. Uh, GameStop is killing me. Says uh, Illy will. Uh, well, 151.67 on GameStop. It was as low as 149. Now come back uh, 267 a share, down 5.98. SoFi 15.33, down 40 cents. The low of the day on SoFi 15.21. It's come back 12 or so cents at the moment. And Robinhood at 39.46, up a dollar 78. Um, ATIP up 13 cents to 3.88. Matterport of fourteen sixty nine. Uh, that was as low as fourteen fifty five. Now I'm showing fourteen seventy eight. It's jumping around quite a bit right now on Matterport. We are down on the day. Um, I have no reasoning for it. I cannot tell you why. It just is fourteen seventy nine right now. Low of fifty five. Twenty four cent bounce back off the low. Uh, Five hundred twenty thousand shares on Matterport. So what the opening market is giving us today. A lot of confusing trades. It's that horrible answer, because because <laughs> it's just it's because <laughs> more more sellers than buyers. <laughs> That's right. That was up like a hundred points on the opening. It's now down eighty uh, or sixty-seven. It's really jumping around a lot. Uh, Ten cent stock, which is a Chinese uh, game uh, video game maker, under attack from Chinese authorities. Oh. Video games might be uh, severely curtailed for Chinese children. Are they bad? Video games are bad oh, as far as the bad. Chinese authority, the authorities are concerned. It's bad. I heard on the radio this morning See? they're testing every citizen of Wuhan because they have a new variant. Wuhan <laughs> has a new variant. <laughs> they, Yay. They, they, they think they have a new variant. So they're Wuhan. testing every citizen. There's got to be 10 million of them. Citizens. I think so. Yes. It's a huge city. Yes, it's a big city. They're testing every citizen of Wuhan right now. Yeah. Mandatory. Come even, in for a test. They've been slammed down for a couple of days now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. If that's if there's another variant that is even more viral, more dangerous than the Delta variant, it's the possibility that a variant will come out that will be impervious to our It'll be totally vaccines. resistant to the vaccine. So the vaccines will be useless. We'll have to get a new one. Yeah. See, if everyone got the vaccine first, you would have stopped the variants in their tracks. And there would be no more variant. There would be no nothing. Viruses are amazing things. They re viruses and pre engineer themselves. The flu vaccine every year is a new kind of vaccine. Yes. Yeah, our our flu vaccines have to be changed every year because the flu variant changes every year to find ways to outmaneuver our vaccines. 
This is why time just is, as, is the essence. That's right. Parents are just trying to hang around, trying to survive with their kids. Uh, <laughs> scary stuff. It's get so scary. Minivan, go to the movies. You know. Yeah, go out for a show. Have some fun. You know. The virus. That's what yeah, the virus the virus, the virus wants to live, too. Unbelievable. You know what's really sad? In the All About Us world? <laughs> yes, my dear. They don't even tell us we have smoke anymore. Here, they, here, yeah. yeah. They just know we do. And Castle Gar, which is about an hour and a 15 minutes away from us. Hour, hour and a half, yeah. Was the worst air quality in the world yesterday. In the world. <laughs> that would be worse than Bangalore, <laughs> India, or Mumbai, or Jakarta, downtown Jakarta. Worse and, than that. Yeah, we're, we're an hour away. We're, we're getting that smoke, too. And, and ours doesn't even show smoke anymore. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I, it's affecting my throat. <clears throat> I'm constantly clearing my throat yeah. all the time. You, can't you hear see me? Our mountains. Um, you can't see our mountains that are three miles away from our, our house. Can't see the mountain three miles away. Can't we're see we're in the right. valley of the, the Selkirks, the Skimmerhorns, and the Purcells, and you can't see any of them. Can't see any of the mountains. <laughs> They're mountains. We're surrounded by them. We can't see any of them. We're socked in like a London fog. Smoke. Except to smoke. Unbelievable. But it's oh. only 18 degrees. It's cool. So you really um, want to open your windows, but yeah. you can't open your windows. But you can't open your windows, because if you do, but you get the smoke. you feel better knowing it's only 18, ah. not like 26 already. Frustrating. <laughs> Frustrating. My Matterport water coming just up. popped. Do you know what bagel you want, or should I come back? Mm, bagel. Should I give you a few more minutes, sir? I'm thinking egg. I'm oh, thinking okay. scrambled egg, cheese, <laughs> ketchup. i gotta be. I got to dip a bagel okay. today. Uh, I think bagel. this bagel market dip needs a bagel dipping old bagel man to get the markets to go up. 1532 on our SoFi now, down 40 cents, low of the day, 1521, 3 million traded. GameStop down 7 bucks to $150.50. ATIP up 12 and a half cents to 387.50. AMC down a buck 31, 3389. Matterport 1495, up 40 cents from the low, but down 93 on the day. Ma Matterport has had an unreasonable drop. ME sitting at 801 right now. Um, let me get that up here. 801, low of the day, 791, bounced back a dime on 400,000, still down 22 cents. Um, fifth wall down six cents, vector down three, nav site unchanged, six terra down two cents. So mainly negative with a with a couple of exceptions, but not much. Robinhood 3970 up 202, high of the day, 40 bucks a share on Robinhood. The bizarro world continues unabated. Uh, Robinhood is up and everything else is down. That does that ain't right. <laughs> the Dow down 35 points. It's come back. Uh, still down, but it's come back. S P down 7.9. Nasdaq down 78. Oil down a buck 48. Oil's going the right direction. Uh, the rest of the market is kind of weird uh, and weird and strange today. Um, Matterport 14.95 a share. Uh, let's get this update. 15 bucks a share on Matterport. We're back to 15 on Matterport. Low of 14.55. The recovery is 45 cents in 10 minutes on Matterport. It went a little too far, too quick. Uh, what can I say? Um, uh, GameStop down 7.41 at 150.10. SoFi 15.28 now. Uh, still seven cents. Above the low of the day, but not recovering yet in any serious way. So it is at its low of the day. Maybe SoFi is a bargoon here. Of course, I bought more GMST. Nicely done, Nancy. Uh, well done. Uh, what else is going on? Um, finally, IBM. Finally, it's doing what it was supposed to do a week ago. It's finally doing it today. IBM up 218 a share to 143.60. It's surging higher. It's the high of the day, and it's going higher on the IBM. Those of you who bought IBM calls, like I told you to, uh, you're doing all right. You're getting better. You're getting stronger. But, uh, man, what a crazy day. Sold some of my GameStop 165. I'll be glad to buy back some right now. Um, what else is going up? Stocks only go up, right? That's that's what people thought. That's what people thought. Um <laughs> Uh, Uncle Bruce, uh, you can't really tell because warrants may trade 1716, depending on excitement, but you can factor in value. If it's 20 bucks, warrant is 850 value. That's right. It, it, that's exactly right. You, you got it. We did talk about this. Um, what else is going on? Um, what else? What else? Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with you, but 
your messages are way ahead of me today. Uh, GameStop puts strike 140 for Friday. Volume 2675. Open interest 1393. Heavy volume on GameStop puts. Um, everything fell in the market at the same time. Not just our stuff, says Snake. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, the virus is trying to survive like anybody else. That's right. Uh, and here we are. Red Day means ketchup on a on a bagel. I, I I'm. <laughs> Uh, yep, 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 yep. Uh, could we go back to politics? That was a lot more fun than this. Uh, <laughs> oh, you guys are great. I love you guys. Uh, it's all good. Uh, share your frustrations. It's all right. Let it out. Uh, just, you know, don't hold it back. Uh, it, it is what it is. The market is the market. 143.59 on IBM up 217. Go IBM. Who doesn't want it to go up? We all want it to go up. Uh, Robinhood, 41.35. The day Robinhood goes up to 41.35 is the day the market is screwed up. And today, the market is screwed up. Uh, we are now positive seven points on the Dow. We have come back from a 100 plus point dip to come back into the positive on the Dow. S&P is now down six and a half. NASDAQ down still 78. So there's better movement there. Uh, SoFi, uh, 1542, just jumped 20 cents. Your SoFi is back up uh, 20 from the low. It's still down 31 on the day, but it's just jumped 20 cents a share. Uh, GameStop, 151.09, just popped a buck. ATIP, 387, up 12 cents. AMC, 33.72, still under pressure. Uh, the low day, a low of the day, 33.45. It's at 33.72 on AMC. Say, so, let's see what else we got here. SoFi, 15.41. All right, Matterport, 15.09. Uh, it has now come back from the 1455 low. It has recovered 50 cents of its drop in 15 minutes. Uh, we're still down 82 cents, but it is coming on quite a bit. 23 and me, 805, down only 18 cents now. Fifth wall, up a penny. Vector down the nickel. Navsite, up a penny. Sixtera, down two cents. IBM, 143.50 a share. The Dow up seven and a half. So we've got uh, positive movement on the uh, markets again. Uh, go, you tell me why this market drops like it drops and comes up like it comes up. Uh, this variant thing is really throwing people for a loop today. Really wacky. Matterport, 15 bucks a share right now. GameStop, 151.36 right now, uh, down 6.29 is where I see the market at the moment. Uh, the low of the day on GameStop, 149. We've improved $2.37. Uh, still watching the markets. The Dow now up 42 points. We have a real turnaround happening here on the Dow. Looking at the, uh, the stocks that have the biggest changes on the day, for the losers, the loser now is Disney down 320, McDonald's down three, Visa down 270, Boeing down 219, Goldman Sachs is only down 205. It has come back four bucks a share in a half an hour. American Express down 185. As a matter of fact, Dow losers, there's only nine of them. 21 are winning. Uh, the big winner. Home Depot up 444, 3M up 290, Amgen up 272, IBM up 225, Johnson Johnson up a buck 96, Procter and Gamble up a dollar 93, United Healthcare up a buck 80, Walmart up a buck, Microsoft up a buck, Travelers up 93. So we got the Dow moving higher quickly, and the worst performer on the Dow, Walt Disney's only down a dollar 93. We had stocks down. Six, five, and four dollars each as losers half an hour ago. The worst loser now down a buck ninety. The second worst down a dollar thirty. The Dow is coming on across the board. It's not one stock that's improving on the Dow. It's all stocks on the Dow are improving right now. We're up forty-five points on the Dow. We're up three now. We're up four on Nasdaq. Complete turnaround here in the last twenty minutes. Uh, the Nasdaq down only 33 now. The market is coming on like gangbusters. SoFi at 1540. We're up 19 cents from the low. We're still down 33 cents. GameStop 151. ATIP going up again. 14 cent gain. Uh, Matterport 1515 now. We have climbed 60 cents from the low of the day 
in 30 minutes. Uh, we're now down 73 cents. Matterport is going higher quickly. ME down 18. Fifth wall up a penny. Vector down a nickel. Nafsite up a penny. Sextra down two. IBM up 215. Home Depot up 432. Interesting. The NASDAQ is, uh, uh, Microsoft is up 86. Apple's up 48. They've gone positive as well. Tesla down only 15 cents. About to turn the corner as well. Still down on the cruise lines. Uh, Facebook down a buck 45. Amazon down 20 bucks. Google down $21. Um, interesting. The banks are turning around. Uh, JP Morgan is break even, has broken even. Goldman down only $2 a share. Goldman was as low as 371.77. It's now 376. So that's almost five bucks on the way back for Goldman Sachs. There you have it. The market is turning here quickly and everywhere. Um, you know, they go down, they go up. Welcome to the markets, kids. Get used to this. If you're going to stick around a while, you're going to be an investor. You better be able to handle this. That is what markets do. They do sometimes gyrate, and sometimes it's stupid reasons. Uh, but what are you going to do? There it is. Um, fun times. Uh, come on, man, Cezinho. Uh, come on. Uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Uh, SoFi, 1540. GameStop, 150.50. Um Matterport 1513. Uh, very interesting. Um, and I'm watching this this wild, wild market. 390 on ATIP now. We're up 15 cents on ATIP. Uh, the high today, 393, going for four bucks. Uh, we might be going for four dollars on ATIP. Volume on ATIP now. Uh, 933,000, that is really light compared to lately, and it is climbing 391 now, up 16 cents. 392, just another penny kicked in on ATIP. Okay, getting mo beta. All right, the Dow up 35, uh, SP up two, NASDAQ down 40, oil down a dollar 20 a barrel or so. Matterport 1516, a little better, 23 me holding eight bucks, uh, right at the moment. And ATIP, 392, 393. GameStop trying to hit 152 now. 151.95 on GameStop, trying to break through 152. Um, SoFi, 15.39 at the moment. And Robinhood, 41.47. Inexplicable. <laughs> yeah, just inexplicable. This is nuts. Uh, yep, yep, that's right. Sometimes that, that's how it would, there it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, wow. Uh, on ATIP, a $5 call uh, to sell is $23. I want to make money. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? Um, <laughs> uh, who cares? Uh, does SoFi have some kind of partnership with Samsung? Uh, with a card offer for Samsung money by SoFi, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of marketing going on by SoFi, tons. I, I, you'll have to let me know if you hear about this. You're in the states, I'm not. I don't get this stuff up here. Uh, going postal, there is no hype. It's a genuine zoological virus that cross species barrier, meaning that we have no inherent immunity to it. Good point. Really good point. Is anyone selling calls on ATIP? I, I'm not sure why you want to do that. Remember how you said you like it a little toasted? I, I, okay, I really would like my bagel a little crispy on the top. Do you think I could have it a little I, crispy? I, I just want to remind you that. that you, you he like he said like he that. said he liked it crispy on the top. He liked it yeah. nice and crispy. Rock hard, burn solid to the ground. Oh, my gosh. You have to have it. It's the last one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do we have any more in the freezer? I think we have a six yes. pack. Yeah, one more. Yes. But we are, we are running yeah. out. These are so. the Costco. My Costco bagels, I'm running out of them. Oh my gosh, from Calgary. It's hilarious. There you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I want one of these, as you know. <laughs> I want one of those. Oh man. 1535 on SoFi, 4118 on Robinhood. Robinhood is up 351 a share. Unbelievable. Um, GameStop, 152.64. Like butter. Went right through 152 like butter. ATIP of uh, 392 to 393 now on ATIP 395 actually what I'm looking at now we're up 20 cents on ATIP 
finally, coming back to that $4 level, uh, we're probably going to hit that today and maybe break it. Um, that's a little better. Matterport, fifteen twenty-eight down 60 cents now. That is a huge improvement. Uh, that is a big move, almost 73 cent improvement. We're down only 60 cents on this thing. We've recovered over half the loss on Matterport in 30 minutes. 23 me hanging around at 797. Uh, fifth wall up a penny. Wector down a nickel. Navsite up a penny. Sextera down two cents. Home Depot up 445. IBM up 243 to 143.85. Anybody hold IBM calls? You're getting happier if you are. Um, okay, let's have let's have a crunchy bagel. <laughs> oh, this is a crunchy bagel. I wanted one and I got one. Uh, thank you all very much for hanging around and being here today. Let's see if this market wants to go higher. Forty six point gain on the Dow now. A, a one eighty four gain. One point eight four on 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 S and P. Nasdaq down forty points. Okay, um, we've got uh, the ten year down lower. ATIP at 394, 395 right now. Mm. Mm. Three ninety eight ATIP. Three ninety eight. Three ninety nine ATIP. Three ninety nine. Here we go. Four bucks, ATIP, four dollars a share. Here we go. Crunch. Four dollars, you got it, John. Four bucks, Davis sees it. Four dollars and a half. We're over four dollars. Right on, four bucks and we're going higher. It looks like it's broken four. They're taking it out. There's buying. Coming in on ATIP, that is taking out the $4 resistance level. 1.1 million traded. That's all. And it's up a quarter now to $4. Welcome back to four. Let's see what it's got behind this. Interesting. Okay. GameStop going higher. The bagel is working. Chew, Bruce, chew. <laughs> we found the title of your new book, The Crunchy Bagel. Rob, hey, um, Uncle Bruce puts on RCL for like December, January. Still recommended. What strike do you like? Well, I think the stock's going down to the 60s, low 60s. So, um, you know, uh, get, get something close to the money, though. Brad wants to know, if you own stock, why would you buy puts on it? It's like insurance. But I, I'm talking about writing puts. Uh, I've, I've been talking about writing put contracts. Being bullish. So you write, uh, ATIP, by the way, 404 now, 405. Um, you, buy, uh, you buy a $5 put on ATIP, for example, for like a month. If you can get 40, 50 cent premium, stock goes higher, or oh, actually a five dollar, a five dollar ATIP might be like a buck twenty right now, so it's in the money. But uh, if the stock goes higher, that put expires worthless, and you keep the money, and without having to buy the stock, you own, you, you, you take the physical, the time degradation. I like GameStop puts by writing GameStop puts. I like the idea of that. GameStop puts, if you can write one forties. Uh, 145s right now and get a big fat premium for a two or three week hold. Uh, st Game stock goes to 160. You keep all the premium for yourself. If the stock goes down, you buy the stock at say 145 with a ten dollar premium. Uh, you're paying 135 for it. If you don't mind buying Game stock at 135, that's an idea. I'm just I'm just throwing numbers out there. I'm not saying this is the quote because I'm looking not I'm looking at quotes. I'm looking at you. All right, but I like writing puts. All right, uh, Game stock 151.72. Uh, ATIP 407 now. 407 going higher very good we like this we like it uh let's keep it going okay um let's keep this stock going keep this stock going go atip um people are are, are picking fights on stock markets with bruce um well you know atip is going up and up and up uh pick a fight or not but you're getting richer um 
you know, if you bought it low, you're happy now. 405, 407. Mm. Matterport back to 1520. Go Matterport. <laughs> British Shilling. Beautifully done. 406, 407. Go, baby. Let's go, baby. Here you go. Hey, Bruce, I just want to give a shout out to the brave souls here who YOLO'd on ATIP at 299 and they got 5,000 shares of this stuff. If it goes to 10 bucks, good on you. Take the year off. There you go. ATIP, still cheap at 408, and that's where it is. 408, 409. There you go. Paid chills. Sending you doom and gloom articles. 1532 on SoFi. 410 on ATI. 411 on ATIP. SoFi at 1532, up now 11 cents from the low. ATIP 411 and climbing. <laughs> My dad's bigger than your dad. <laughs> Go ATIP. Good morning, Zach. Welcome to the show. We're going higher on ATIP now. Yep, we're up 370 on Robin Hood. Crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> 412 on ATIP. 412. Going to 413 now. High of 414 already. It's running ATIP volume 1.35 million. People sold this stuff as low as 281. They sold it as low as 281. 81. I hope none of them were here. I hope none of you did it. Um, we're looking good. We're looking good. Does anyone have 250 call contracts on ATIP? Does anyone here have $5 call contracts on ATIP? Are they any better? Um, they should be a little better by now. Should be a little, little improvements in price, I would think, on ATIP contracts. Uh, here and there, I mean, not like it's, you know, the greatest move of all time, but there have to be improvements coming along here. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yep, the 250s are moving for, for November. The, uh, the fives are moving for uh, November as well. February 2022 call contracts on ATIP. We're at 413 a share right now, aren't we? Yep, yep, 413 now. The twos, the, the 250s are up 20 cents. They're looking better. They're looking even better than that. They're looking like they're up 30 cents now, 250. Uh, or sorry, it's a 160 last trade, 160, 175 bid ask. Fantastic. Uh, the fives are 75 to 80 now. That's looking better. Uh, even the 750s and and now the tens the tens are showing 35 cents on on February calls, November calls the tens are now showing 15 cents 17 cents the the 750 is showing 20 25 the fives are showing 45 55 getting a little better, 
the 250s are showing 45 to 160, 145, 165 now. Um, that's moving up. A little here, a little there. Uh, just keep on going. 415 on ATIP going up right here. I picked up ATIT. It's 372. I need some convincing, says Joanne. There you go. Um, is ATP still in your good books? It seems to really fall for what's your last time. It is in my good books as far as the potential of this company and this stock. It's in my good books. Um, I did a big spiel about it this morning, talked about it for a bit. Yeah, I think it is. It, there is potential here still. I think so far it's getting better. 15.37, we're up 16 cents from the low. Come on, so far. Matterport's getting better. 15.37, only down 51 cents now. It's improving. 4.15 on ATIP. 4.17. 4.17 on ATIP. Penny by penny, it's coming back. Nothing left for sale. It's all gone. Mmm. <laughs> Five calls, ATIP here, improvement, yes. There you go, 420. Okay, baby, go ATIP, get going, get going. <laughs> 422 on on uh, GameStop, oh, sorry, on ATIP, 422, 423 now. Uh, we've seen those prices, 428 for the high already. Uh, we're seeing some real jumping around here. We're going to see, you know, ups and downs. We're going to see this now, but uh, this is looking good. ATIP. You know, soon, a short-term target, five and a half, six and a half. Should be a short-term target. So there you go. Um, it's at, you know, four, whatever it is now, 414, uh, touch 428. Yep. Yeah. It's going to jump around, jump about a bit. It's a 42 and a half cents today. Remember, this is a 10% up move today. Looking a lot better. Uh, that selling pressure we had last week, it's gone. It's all over. That was month end. It's over. Um, we're, 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 we're no longer near anywhere near 281, three bucks a share. That's over for a while. Maybe forever. GameStop, 150.33. So far, 15.33. Matterport, 15.36. ATIP, 418 to 420 again. Four eighteen nineteen four twenty on ATIP four twenty, coming on again. I got ten two fifty call contracts expiring. I paid a buck sixty. Get ready to make money. It's jumping, it's jumping, but there's news coming on SoFi. The earnings are coming out next week. Hang on.
I bought three ATIP $5 contracts for 65 cents. <laughs> oh, man. Fabulous. Go, baby, go. Um, so sad. I sold uh, 185 shares of ATIP of 375 this morning to buy four contracts of GameStop at 160 for next week. The verdict is not in yet, but I feel kind of bad. Oh, my. Well, you know, GameStop can, can make you a hero. Um, you know, you know how it is with GameStop. It, it could this afternoon be 165. So it isn't over. But, um, yeah, this is, this is uh, you don't, you shouldn't be selling stocks at all-time lows. <laughs> you just... Really not what I do, but it's all, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, let the game stop play out. Um, you know, I, I'm hoping that you do okay on them. But, uh, you know, I, I really prefer you guys don't sell one to buy another. You, 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 what you got, you hold. You sit, and what you have, you wait it out. That's the, this the discipline you have to learn. Anyway, that's what it is. Um, does anyone know what caused today's market drop? They're talking about, uh, as far as headlines go, uh, COVID worries. COVID, 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 COVID worries. That's what it is. Um, Uncle Bruce, what about a put on GameStop for 27 August 140 strike? Could uh, uh, could get about 1,200. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, uh, 27th August, it's uh, three, four weeks out, writing, uh, writing a 140 put on a, on a 151 stock that's dipping here. Um, pick up $1,200. The stock pops to 160.65. In the next two weeks, those contracts will be down to four or five dollars. You've got a nice little gain there. Obviously, if you get exercised, you're paying one twenty-eight for the stock. Are you comfortable paying one twenty-eight for games for game stuff? I like that trade. I do like that trade. Although I do en would enjoy a closer in trade, uh, timing wise. If you could get maybe the twentieth of August or the thirteenth of August, you might not get as good a strike. But timing is better. If you can get, you know. Instead of getting twelve hundred, could you get seven hundred or eight hundred? Um, you might or might not. I I don't know. It, it's 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 a good trade. I don't mind this trade, um, uh, but you might be able to do it a little closer in. Um, keep look at the strike prices and see what you find. But right now we're one fifty one oh eight, and so you want to pull the trigger on this soon because if the stock pops five six bucks today, you are laughing on this contract. So there you go. All right. I just wish we had some good news so far. It's I think it's coming soon because uh, the company can't wait. They couldn't wait to announce their conference call for their earnings. And that is on the 12th of August, I think it was. So that's in 11 that's in um, in 9 days. So that's next uh, Thursday. Uh, so Devil King, just 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 hang tough, uh, hang tough. Fifteen thirty four on SoFi. The low of the day was fifteen twenty one. So we've come back thirteen cents already today. Uh, so we're improving here on four point three million. There's buying coming in here at these levels, scooping up some cheap stock. ATIP four nineteen to four twenty a share on ATIP up forty eight cents. Four twenty three now just popped. We're up forty eight cents on uh, on ATIP. Uh, nickel away from the high of the day again. Looking better. Matterport at fifteen eighteen got as low as fourteen fifty five. So we've had good improvement there. Little pause in the action right now. 23 and me back to 805. It was as low as 791. It's now down only 18 cents. Fifth wall up a penny. Vector down a nickel. Nav site unchanged. Sixtera 872 down 15 cents. IBM up 287 to 144.28. IBM is killing people with its, uh, its slow movement, but over time, you got enough time on your options, you will make money on IBM. And it is coming on. If you wrote puts on IBM, you're making money. Uh, Home Depot, 332 up 563. Vanic Vectors up 31 cents. Um, Microsoft up 11. Apple up 32. Tesla down 338 right now. That's where we're at. The Dow up 56. S&P up one point. NASDAQ down 62 is what we have here. Um Amazing, up six bucks on Robinhood to forty three eighty five. The world has gone completely the opposite direction. It has no idea what it's doing, but it's doing what it's doing. Uh, it's wild. I, I am amazed at Robinhood's price. Absolutely amazed. Um, it's like an AMC. They're they're buying a stock that uh, 
a, a company that's losing money. I just it's just incredible to me. Forty four sixteen up six forty eight on Robinhood right now. Wacky. SoFi fifteen forty. Just popped a little bit here. Um, we're now down only, or well, we're back 19 cents from the low. Uh, we're down 33 now. So it's popped back to 1540 on SoFi. ATIP 420 to 423 a share. Jumping around like crazy here. Amazing. Good day going on. ATIP. Matterport 1522 down 66 cents. All right. What else? Uh, or well, we're getting less poor. There you go. <laughs> Uh, I got 10 ATIP 250 call contracts going till February 2022. I paid a buck 60. Big Daddy, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to do very well on that contract trade. Um, uh, Devil King uh, doesn't day those again. So what's going on? We've talked about this. I bought three for five. Beautiful. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, we talked about the puts on GameStop. Um, that that how's that bagel? That bagel was awesome. Even though it was crunchy on the top end, it was still pretty darn good. ATIP could be 20, 30 thing a year. It looks like Fauci said no new lockdowns. That's going to help that kind of business. Well, again, uh, um, you know, this is a company that will be around for years and years and years. I think they're going to grow by acquisition. Um, they're going to grow by merger. There are 38,000 physiotherapy centers. They have 900 of them. They got a wide open market to go after. They're the single largest independent player of the physical therapy business. And this stock is way oversold. Uh, for 2023 right now on ATIP. IBM is alive, finally alive. Yay. Do you think MU is finally oversold? Seeing consistent upward trend for a week. Is this for real, Bruce? Is this possible? Can it really happen? 79.10 on the stock. Um, well, it certainly had a dump, didn't it? It went down as low as uh, 72.64 on the 27th or so. Now back to 79.06. So it's had a good week. Uh, it's trading at 21 times earnings. Still cheap. And they can sell everything they make. No problem. Also, the buzz of people buying millions of shares of ATIP for days and weeks. ATIP 423 uh, coming on again. Woohoo! Let's go. <clears throat> what do we got? What do we got? Uh, when viewers attack Bruce for a stock pick, I buy it. There you go. Um, I got my 30 uh, cent ATIP fives and a dollar twenty ATIPs what two fifties. Sit and hold, baby. Sit and hold and watch the ride. Four twenty four going higher. I uh, love it. <clears throat> Let's see. Just picked up some more Matterport. Yeah, baby. Scooping up the giveaway. Uh, that's what it is. Fifteen twenty two. It's a giveaway. Uh, let's go. Um, I missed you saying good morning, Jen. Uh, where have you been, Duncan? Uh, <laughs> uh, AB, I got a few $10 November calls. Could be 15 a share by then. It's possible. Um, Fenville, I bought them at 280 Still have 700 ATIP and 10 contracts at 250 left. Fenville, good job. Good job. Uh, you're going to make money, my dear. You're going to make money, um, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that. It's GameStop, 150, The stock goes up to 158, 160 today. You're laughing already. You're laughing already, my dear. You're going to be fine. Uh, let's go, baby. Uh, making money, trying to make money. Every day it changes, and it's all crazy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, one never knows where one ends up on one day from another. Oh, hang in there, guys. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, ATIP, this keeps going. I'm going to be breaking even. Uh, well, that's what we're hoping for and more. Um, uh, my doctor surgically removed my emotions. Uh, absolutely a must if you're going to play this market, says Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh thomas what are you thinking about sykstra i like it i i think they're going to expand like atip i think they're going to use this public vehicle to buy up server farms systematically ruthlessly one after the other and they're going to get larger and larger and they're going to make money whether you wait around or not whether you stick around as a shareholder or not they're going to make money i just want to make enough money to be able to join your live classes uncle bruce i think atip will get me there right on uh let's go uh what else is going on here? Uh, okay, Uncle Bruce, correct me, uh, it, 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 but if if you buy, if you buy a put on GameStop, a one forty put for August, you have to pay a thousand bucks to buy it, right? 
how's that other guy how's that other guy getting it he's selling a put he's opening a position to write the put that's the position i would recommend you do you sell the put and write it you commit to buying gamestop at 140 dollars you are paid a thousand dollars or depending on the price of the contract you're paid a thousand to twelve hundred dollars to buy the stock at 140. In other words, you're getting between 10 and 12 dollars a share up front to commit to buying GameStop at 140 until August 27th. If you must buy it, if you get assigned, you must buy 100 shares at 140 dollars a share. But you're being given 1000 to 1200 of that money now in cash. So actually you only need to come up with $130 a share or $128 a share, depending on the $10 to $12 per share price, to buy the stock. Would you be happy to buy? Would you be willing to buy 100 shares of GameStop at $128 to $130 a share between now and August 27th by selling this contract? If the shares stay above $140, $145, $150, 160 they stay above $140. Between now and the end of uh, 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 between now August and 27th, the next three and a half, four weeks, you will not be obligated to buy the stock. You get to keep the thousand twelve hundred dollars for your you get to keep all of it. The option will die worthless. The option right now is out of the money, eleven dollars and nine cents. It is out of the money by eleven oh nine. The stock is down six fifty today. If the stock goes back to one fifty eight today. This contract is $18 out of the money. It will drop in value the higher GameStop goes. If you like GameStop, you will write a call option against it. Now, I recommend looking at this Friday's puts, next Friday's puts, not a month. Out. I'd rather be shorter in. So if you're going to write a, a GameStop put that dies in the next week to, 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 to two weeks, you're not going to get as much premium but then you're not around as long either the commitment isn't as long to theoretically buy the um buy the stock on an option okay let me take a look right now as we are sitting here right at this minute on the put side of game stops shares right now 150.92 a 140 call that dies this friday is a 236 to 253 right now so you're not going to get rich, uh, but you know what? Um, are the odds that you have to buy this stock high at 140? You're 11. You're 10 dollars and 92 cents away, but it is down six bucks today. You know how this stock can go. It can drop five, ten bucks a day every day. It can do it. Um, but uh, the lower it goes, the more buying that seems to come into the stock, and more snap rallies take place. 140 for this Friday. You can bring in almost 250 a share. If the stock does not drop to the 140 level, these contracts will die worthless. You keep all 250 a share, 250 bucks for one contract. On the other hand, you want to write a contract for next Friday, that's on August the 13th expiry. You want to write that contract. Um, I'm not showing the 140 showing here at the moment. I'm showing 130s and 145s. 145s are seven ish. Uh, 130s are two something. I'm going to guess the um, the uh, 140 would be about uh, five ish dollars, something around five something dollars a share. Your own personal uh, um, uh, your own personal uh, uh, platform will show you what the uh, 140s are going for. You can write 145s. You can write 150s. You can write 152 and a halves. You can write 155s. You can write whatever option you want on the call or the put. But on the put side, if you're thinking about a $140 put contract, which is $10 out of the money, uh, you're looking at about five odd dollars for the 13th. For August the 20th, the 140 is going for 760, 775, and now the uh, the August the 27th 140 looks like it's pushing around 950, 960 a piece. It it varies. That's the premium on these puts out of the money right now. If you want to write a 150 put at the money right here, you think the shares will not go below 150 for very long, you can write an August the 27th put contract right now with $150 strike price. You'll bring in 1420 to 1430 a contract, a share, $1,400 a share, a contract, I should say. 
Again, if you write one for this week, expiring this Friday night, the 150 that expires this week in three and a half days, you'll bring in right now six bucks a share right now. So you're committing to buy it at 144 because you're going to pay 150 less the six bucks you just got handed to you. You're going to pay 144 for 100 shares of GameStop. Are you prepared to pay 144 for 100 shares of GameStop by this Friday? You can write a 150 put contract right now, bring in about six dollars a share, six hundred dollars per one contract, and you're on the hook for three and a half days. Stock today goes back to 154, 156. Tomorrow trades at 160, 63. Friday goes back to 155. You won't get exercised. You keep all 600 bucks. It's all yours. Question of the risk factor you want to go with. Okay? That is what's going on whether you buy them or you sell them. All right. Uh, let's keep an eye on things. Uh, Robinhood, 43.63 up 5.95. SoFi, 15.28 down 44 cents. We've got uh, right now... Um, um, uh, GameStop 149.76. There's that magic number 149. Now the puts are going up in price because the stock is coming down. But uh, do you think 140 is uh, too far, too too way too low? Right. Look at writing 140s. If you're uh, you want to write 135s, 130s, you can do that. The further out you go, the lower they are. But the further you are away from getting exercise. Um, we've got ATIP at 415 right now, up 40 cents a share. We have uh, AMC down 233 a share to 32, 32.88. Matterport, um, uh, 1508 down 80 cents. 23 me 806 down 17. Fifth wall up a penny. Vector down four. Navsite up one. Sextera down 25 cents to 862. Uh, IBM up 238 to 143.80. Uh, going higher on IBM, pushing 144 now on IBM. The street is finally figuring out this thing's a bargain. IBM is cheap and it is going higher. Uh, the Dow is up 39 points, uh, roughly 34, 30, 47 points now. Um, the Dow is up 47, SP up a half a point, NASDAQ down 53. That's what we have going on right at this moment in time. ATIP, high of the day for ATIP today, 428 a share. Right now, 412, holding a 37 cent gain, a very good day today. Uh, the resistance levels at four were not there, just were not there. And uh, volume of over 2 million traded now. Bargain hunters coming into ATIP, thinking now the longer term game picking this stuff up that's what's going on right now all right there you have it uh this is our latest updates where we're going here kids uh let's see um what else is going on what else is going on uh thank you all for being here hope uh, hope you're enjoying the explanations um um here we go the credit savage hey wow uncle bruce are really going after our spacs today SoFi, Matterport are getting hammered. Uh, looks like I'll buy 200 more shares of SoFi because it's what we do. It's on sale. 1530 on SoFi. That's a deal down 42 cents. ATIP 416 up 41. Still a bargain. Uh, and Matterport 1512. Bargoon City here on Matterport down 77 cents. 23 and me 805. Bargoon here. What can I say? Um, amazing. What a day. Um, just insanity. Robinhood 4373 wild and wacky uh, if you think Robinhood is overpriced um you know you look at put contracts are there contracts now available on on hood can you trade contracts yet i'm not sure uh let me pop up the hood here um looking up, i'm i'm opening the hood uh, let's see what's going to um do we have options on the hood not yet no not yet so we have to wait a while before that happens uh, it'll be interesting to see how the options market plays Robinhood when that thing opens up. That's going to be wild, wild volume on Robinhood. That's going to be crazy. 27 plus million on the hood now. Unreal. It's incredible. SEC allows companies like this to, this to go public. It's, it's incredible to me. Lawsuits everywhere against these guys. I mean, lawsuits after lawsuits. The legals these guys are paying to keep lawyers, uh, to keep them alive is, is mil millions a month. I bet you they're paying millions a month in legal fees to stay alive. Um, I wouldn't invest in these guys. No way. Uh, it just blows my mind. But 
what can I say? We're back to 150 40 on GameStop, uh, down 725, back to 150 40 on the GameStop shares. Wow, what a, what a morning. What an incredible morning we have going here today. Just incredible. Uh, ATIP, 4, 415 a share, up 40 cents, holding most of these games right now uh, so far today. And uh, we've got a 36-point climb on the Dow, one-point drop, 1.6-point drop on S&P, and NASDAQ down 56 points. As far as the Dow 30 industrials go, the worst performers um, would be uh, Visa, uh, now down 490, um, Walt Disney down 440, McDonald's down three bucks. So the, the worst of the worst are getting worse. Uh, best performers, Home Depot and 3M, both up over three bucks. Amgen up 260, International Business Machines up 225, Procter and Gamble up 190. So we got uh, we got more higher than lower on the Dow, and the Dow is up just a touch um, at this point, um, and uh, we're up 32 points on the Dow. That's where we're at right now. S and P down 2.89. Mm -hmm. Tyson Foods to require vaccinations for all its U.S. workers. That is what's going on. Um, more and more companies are coming up with mandatory uh, enforcements on vaccines. Uh, that it seems to be the only way to get it done, and either get vaccinated or quit your job. And um, I, I couldn't support them more. <laughs> you got to get vaccinated, you guys. Man, oh man! But that's your your choice. Fifteen twenty eight on SoFi. Um, ATIP four four fifteen. Matterport fifteen twenty three down sixty five cents. There's where we're at. Uh, despite my ranting and raving, we have 542 thumbs ups today. Despite all the ranting and raving, we have 105 on the downside today. I've really got people upset today. So we got some action here. Uh, we have 650 something thumbs up down going, 650 almost. So that that's uh, more activity for the channel. Uh, 544 on the thumbs up right now. Thank you for bringing them in and uh, and hitting us with them. Uh, we appreciate the thumbs ups. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. Ah, uh, what a day! What a day! What a day! Um, never, never, never a dull moment here. Um, okay. Thank you all for for popping in. Let's see uh, what else is happening here. Um, Pardon me as I continue to keep an eye on things here. Um, yeah, 558 thumbs ups, 110 thumbs downs, 559 on the upside. So that's 670 now, 670 reactions. Uh, that's uh, that's more than usual. Uh, that's uh, That means you guys are paying attention to this old man ranting away today. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Uh, GameStop new lows because of COVID maybe uh, one fifty thirty nine. People are worried about shopping malls closing again, or uh, you know, uh, who knows restrictions? I don't know. Will there be? I don't know. Depends on I guess where you live. Um, let's see. Where else are we at right now? Uh, Free thinker, I'd be writing puts down here if I was going to mess with GameStop options. Yep, yep, this is a good time to write put options on GameStop. Uh, this stock down 750 right now on the day. Now is your moment to write put contracts it's expiring this Friday or next Friday on GameStop, writing 145s, 140s, 135s. Take some money off the table. This is an opportunity, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> we have. Uh, uh, even AMC, you could write put contracts. So uh, you could write thirty dollars put contracts on AMC right now. Write uh, maybe one or two week put contracts, one, maybe twenty eights, maybe something like that. Um, where else are we looking at here? Uh, any any stock under pressure uh, that's a little too low? Uh, put contract writing is a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, Royal Caribbean down two thirty seven, and that's where you want to buy puts or you want to be long puts for sure. Interesting stuff, uh, just amazing, the uh, the market today. Uh, Goldman Sachs is now positive on the day. Goldman Sachs was as low as 371 this morning. It's now 378. It has come all the way back uh, to gain on the day, 16 cents, down to 371. 
That is a phenomenal turnaround, um, and it's uh, it's up 16 cents on the day. Amazing turnaround on Goldman Sachs today. Wow, what a day. JP Morgan was also down to 149.52. It's now 151.93. It's come back to $2.40, up 76 cents. It was down. A whole bunch of the Dow was down this morning, worried about the COVID thing, and there's been a turnaround. 59, 62-point gain now on the Dow. Right at this moment, ATI Physical Therapy 410 right now, up 35 cents. SoFi 1537. Uh, we're up 16 cents from the low. Uh, coming on with a little run again. 5 million traded on SoFi. 1539 now, coming on a bit more. GameStop going a bit higher. 15042, looking a little better. Um, AMC still down 209 at 3311. Matterport at 15.16, low of the day, 14.55. Wow, what a sell-off that was. That was insanity. ME, 8.05, uh, uh, down 18 cents, got as low as 7.91, so it's improving. Fifth wall up a dime now, a little better. Vector only down 3 cents. Nav side up a penny, Sixterra down 31 cents. The International Business Machine, IBM. Up to 46 to 143.88, going for 144 now on IBM. It has touched 144.37 already today. It's going to do it again the way it looks right now. The Dow's up 72 points and climbing. It's coming on as we speak right now. Wow. 1540 so far coming back up again a little bit more. Okay. ATIP 409, 4010. Whew. NTPC, here's a hug for you from John. Uh, thank you all uh, for being here today. Uh, it's nice to have you here. Um, uh, John Van, see you later. I'm going to get a shower before I get my shot. Way to go, buddy. Right on. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Matt Reiner. Matt Renner, I don't understand this world where Hood goes up and GameStop goes down. Ignorance has to be ignorance. I'm going to start making decisions based on others' ignorance. I can't miss. 44.32 on Robin Hood, up 670. Unbelievable. GameStop down $8 to 149.63. Time to buy puts on GameStop. Uh, sorry, time to write puts on GameStop. Time to write puts on GameStop. There you go. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway. <laughs> oh man. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um. <laughs> 160 my, 165 more SoFi bought at one at 1531, says Credit Savage. Yeah, baby, we have 10 days before liftoff. There you go. Matt, those financials are coming, and they're going to a financial conference. That's right. I really think they're going higher, too. Um, there you have it. Uh, just That's a good move, Credit Savage. I, I commend you. I think that's a great move. Uh, to pick those up. Absolutely. Uh, 1519 on the stock right now. You're stealing it. I'm going to go to SoFi Stadium and wear my SoFi shirt and glasses and drink out of my SoFi cup during the first NFL game at SoFi Stadium that has two NFL teams playing in it. There you go. Uh, a little bit of promotion there coming up. Um, yep, 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 yep. Uh, GameStop, 149.88. Yeah, 149.68. Deal, deal, deal. Time to write puts on GameStop. Look at 140s. 135s, uh, start writing cheap puts, out of the money puts, making easy money. Um, this is uh, ridiculous, the sell off, and I don't think it's for real. It'll last long. Just the way it is, though, 410 on ATIP right here, um, and the Dow now up 78 points on the day. Oh, man. Yep, it's all about volume and open interest with Hood. That's what makes day, day traders flip high volume stocks. That's right. Uh, so Robin Hood is being flipped by day traders like crazy. But you know what? Uh, you can't argue with volume. That's what it's what AMC had for a while. AMC was doing five hundred fifty million a day. That uh, you know five hundred fifty million shares a day it went up to seventy odd bucks a share on that kind of volume. It's now thirty two ninety two. It's not doing a five hundred fifty million shares a day anymore. Thirty million is it for AMC today? That's all the trading on AMC. No matter what you like about it, think about it, whatever the short position is, its volume is drying out. The stock is down 228 on AMC. That's it. GameStop, uh, buy or wait for lower prices. Also, quiet volume. GameStop volume today, 1.5 million. Uh, that was trading 200 million a day in January, February. 
much lower volume here, 149.29, uh, 148.67 now on GameStop. Putting putting the puts back into play. Uh, the puts are getting more valuable the lower the stock gets, which improves premium return if you want to take a shot at getting in there. Uh, you have to be committed to prepare, be prepared to buy GameStop stock if they put it to you. Right now, the uh, the 140s are... are uh, on the puts right now, here we go. Uh, 140s uh, expiring this Friday around 240 a piece, but uh, next week Friday 140s uh, would be around five ish. Um, showing, uh, let's see, the one after that here. Uh, hang on, here we go. 140. Here we go. Uh, seven 740 on the uh, on the uh, August 20s, and the August 27 puts are now pushing over 10 again. Uh, around the ten dollar mark. So uh, interesting. Uh, the lower the stock goes, the higher these contracts will get. Uh, most interesting patterns here. Uh, <clears throat> let me take a look over here if I can get over to here. Coming over to there, and uh, let me take a look at GameStop right now. Um, GameStop uh, trading at one forty eight seventy on the stock. Uh, there we go okay and uh you want to write a uh a uh a, a, a put so uh here we go looking to write a put so here we go GameStop. let me just double check here there we go and we're gonna do uh um, i'm gonna write a put option so if we're looking at the sixth uh, that this week yeah they're sitting around 225 uh, ish 13th let's see 13th uh, still not showing much there on the 20th we're showing yep yeah, 7 uh, 705 to 728 ballpark right now on a put contract that uh, uh, has uh, has uh, not a long time to live but uh, uh, if the shares uh, stay where they are, go higher, you're going to make money on this trade. Um, watch the depreciation and the, de the deterioration of the put contract uh, come your direction. Uh, no question about it. All right, the Matterport, 1517, still down 71 cents. Low of the day, 1453. Wow, uh, what a deal. Uh, GameStop, uh, 148.77 is where we're at right now. Um, Um, Uncle Bruce, it seems like I don't have that option of selling a put on Fidelity, only buying it. Um, hence my previous question. Yeah, there sh you should be able to write puts on GameStop. It's just a question of which series. Um, yeah, volume dying out. Look at GameStop. Don't short GameStop. Um, and uh, let's see here. Um, I'm only, I'm only, I'm almost green on ATIP. I'm only down three percent. Nice job. Nice, nice job, everybody. Uh, yeah, ATIP 412, 413, been as high as four. Uh, what was that? Four something, 440 at one point today. The high on ATIP today, 428. Nice day here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's beyond me how people happily buy BABA, THCY, NIO, and other Chinese stocks and tell me SoFi is too risky. This is real life, by the way. Meanwhile, the Chinese government will not get back, will not get Ma back out. Yeah, yeah they will not get back. Ma out there, he's out. Uh, amazing. Um, let's see. What strike should I have? What strike should I have for an ATIP covered call and when? Uh, you said you like longer. What strike? Uh, you're not going to write ATIP covered calls right now. You're not going to do that. Uh, that's not what I was uh, recommending at all. Uh, and uh, let's go. Yeah, the Wall Street Journal is all about mandatory vaccinations today. And suspicious associate says, let's hope this happens. Uh, well, we'll see what's going on. Um, uh, Robinhood up seven dollars fifteen cents. It's just going straight up. Forty four eighty three on the stock. Ridiculous, just ridiculous. Uh, we're up fifty five points on the Dow right now. Uh, incredible. Um, and we've got uh, SoFi fifteen twenty seven down forty six cents. Um, uh, unbelievable. SoFi is is actually making money. This company actually has cash positive cash flow. Robinhood negative cash flow, ridiculous. Compare these two head to head. SoFi is your solid company, much more solid investment than so than Robinhood. Robinhood is all speculation. 
uh, what can I say? 149.19 on GameStop, down 846. ATIP now 415, 416 on ATIP. It looks like it's coming back up a bit. Um, uh, AMC still at 3302. Matterport 1518. Uh, 23 and me back to 812, down 11 cents now. Seems to be coming on a little bit right now. 814 on 23 and me, a little better on ATIP. Still down nine cents, but it was as low as seven. 91. So 23 and me is, is uh, coming on a little right now. Up nine cents on fifth wall, only down three on vector, up one on Navstar, down 26 on Sextero. That's where we have the markets right at this moment in time. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I got 500 bucks uh, to place. What would you say? So fine or Matterport? What do you do? What do you do? Uh, you can't go wrong either way. Can't go wrong either way. Uh, yeah, the Chinese government will not let Jack Ma out of house arrest because communism. That's right. Can't have a guy be an all star in China unless he's the premier of the country. You can't. You can't have that. The, the 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 authorities will not allow that, and so Jack Ma is hidden away from public view at this point in time. Writing a covered call is bullish, right? Writing? No, it's not. Writing a covered call is almost bearish. I have the shares now and I want to play with writing contracts. Is it just too volatile right now? Uh, and I can't get enough premium to make it worth it. Depending on the, the stock you're talking about, if you're talking about ATIP, um, I wouldn't be writing a covered call on ATIP right now. I wouldn't be writing a covered call, no. I'd be looking at buying, I'd be looking at writing a put on ATIP. I might consider writing a $5 put that has maybe a month to go, but I'm not sure if you're going to get much premium on it. That's the uh, that's the downside of that one. Okay. Um, boy, I blocked just three people, and this chat's already a better vibe. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Um, uh, <laughs> where are we at here? Fifteen thirty-two on SoFi. Uh, GameStop one forty-nine fifty. Um, ATIP 418, 419. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Matterport at 1515, 23 and me at 816 now, down only seven cents. 23 and me is coming back up here on all by itself. We're up nine cents on fifth wall now. Uh, but penny, we're up a penny on NAF site. We're down three on uh, on uh, on uh, Vector. Excuse me. 4440 on Robinhood, um, up 672. What a what a crazy day. The Dow's up 41. And uh, wow, amazing. It says your apartment rents are increasing as young workers head back to major cities. Uh, well, they might be a little better, but they're still down from where they were. Uh, and I really wonder about how this is going to play out long term. Uh, yeah, it could be that the very young without children, head back to the cities where those with kids stay out in the burbs and go further out for uh, for the big the big picture. Um, um, lower crime rates, uh, lower cost of living, uh, lower in infection rates, all this sort of stuff. Uh, there's this this back and forth thing. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see. All right. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Um, Well, A B is not is not has the A B has no sympathy for Jack Ma. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, let me take a look at the Wall Street Journal. Um see what the latest news is coming out of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, let's go. New York City to require vaccines for many outdoor uh, indoor activities. Um and uh, law school loses its luster as debts mount and salaries stagnate. Um, as SPAC creators get rich, how incentives are shared remains murky. Uh, PepsiCo to sell Tropicana naked juice brands. They're going to sell those four and a half billion dollar deal is what they're talking about. Uh, wow. Um, Ten cent sinks after China denounces online gaming. China denounces online gaming. Um, wow. Let's go. Uh, Sh China shuns Ericsson and Nokia as the West curbs Huawei. 
Uh, so the Chinese cellular company is being ignored here, and the Chinese are ignoring Western cable and and, and phone companies, cell phone companies. Um, cable internet companies stand to gain from broadband funding in the infrastructure bill, uh, sixty-five billion to improve internet access for poor and isolated communities. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Marriott sees um, posts quarterly gains, sees business travel picking up um, in the fall. They're hoping for better days. Uh, we'll see about that. Um, hmm. Interesting, dead, interesting headlines coming across the across the world of media out there. Absolutely amazing. ATIP fourteen four fifteen a share. Um, let's see if that's accurate. I'm going to get an update here. Four twenty four four twenty five on ATIP now coming back on again. The high today four twenty eight. We're approaching a new high for ATIP. We got the Dow up seventy three right now. All right. Here we are. Um, yeah, uh, the San Francisco is enacting a mask mandate again for indoor and some outdoor activities. Good call. I wish people saw how deadly this infectious Delta variant is. 1,000 times more transmissible. Uh, there you go. Steve, how about we all focus on shorting uh, Robin Hood? Uh, <laughs> ATIP hit 420, uh, 425 right now in ATIP. So far, 4, uh, 1526. Robinhood is still up 685, um, and GameStop 148.59 down 906. Uh, Matterport is uh, down 72 cents to 1516. 23 and Me 1814 down eight cents. It tries to kind of coming back to the break even line, at least trying to anyway. Vector down two cents back to ten bucks. Uh, that's what we got. Fifth wall up nine cents right now. Uh, uh, amazing, amazing day. Up 85 now on the Dow. <laughs> Down one point uh, on its S and P. Uh, and folks are asking me questions all over the place here. Um, and and uh, yeah, that's right. Credit Savers, I want to short Robinhood so badly. It's the only reason they're up. No options yet. Just wait. It's going to be on par with ATIP. You watch. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, four twenty-three, four twenty-four on ATI right now. Volume on ATI today for 2.92 million, 2.97 million actually, 2.97 million right on. Robinhood touched a high of $45, now $43.99, a little back off there at this point. 148.21 on GameStop down uh, 944, the low of the day, 148.21 right here. We're at the low of the day on your GameStop right now. Uh, writing put contracts and taking in that dough. You can turn around and buy calls, buy stock with it if you want. Uh, so if you're bringing in $1,000 on writing a, a put contract on a GameStop, you turn around with that $1,000 and buy up the stock with that 1000 bucks, helping your cause, <laughs> making the stock go higher. Um, that actually is a good thing. You can do that. Uh, up to you. You have to decide how to play this market and uh, how you want to uh, take a risk factor. At 425 now on ATIP, uh, up $0.50 cents again on this one it is definitely the best performer uh in our little group of stocks although i have to admit robin hood is out doing it and uh it is fantastic um uh thank you c carver uh for your comments um uh c carver is saying uh, i sold to open a put um for a strike price of 120 that expires august the 6th i received 2819 for this good deal or bad um, what stock are we talking about, sir? Um, uh, I don't know what stock you're talking about. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you did that on GameStop, did you? It doesn't, doesn't sound right to me that you did GameStop in that, on that contract. Let's see what we got here. Um, boom. Looking at my options chain right now. Um, uh, GameStop, he says. Okay, so you sold, you sold GameStop at, uh, 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 August the 6th, uh, that's this week, um, uh, 120. 
something's not right in the t in in t here t prices uh i sold to open uh, hang on there we go um sorry sold to open um excuse me folks i have some cable issues here i have to deal with there we go okay there we go uh you sold to open you said a, a put of 120 um okay a 120 put oh okay oh, okay 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 so you sold the put at what did you get you didn't get 2819 dollars you got twenty eight dollars and nineteen cents, uh, right? If you sold a put, um, if you sold a one twenty put, you you did not get um, um, uh, a big money. There's no no that you did not sell the put. You sold a call. You had to have sold a call contract. Um, uh, a one twenty uh, exercise, a one twenty exercise price that expires on August the sixth. Uh, that's trading at twenty eight hundred nineteen dollars. That would have been a call contract at 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 the early that's all i can figure out um something is not right here you're 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 either you're trying to confuse me or you've confused yourself something here is not correct there's no way a put contract with a 120 exercise price has that value there's no it's a 44 to 50 cent contract for a put uh 120 put so i'm uh i'm missing something in your translation my friend you got to help me out here and um and fill me in on what's going on double check your transactions and see what's going on here um because i am i am confused by your comment right now um makes no sense it cannot make any sense okay uh stock right now 149.34 uh down 831 on gamestop low of the day 148.21 we've improved by about a dollar okay uh yeah okay um let's see here <laughs> i'm trying trying to stay up with you guys uh uh, hey, at what point should I think about selling my IBM call? Uh, my 143 call expires next week, Friday. Okay. So your your IB your IBM right now is trading at uh, what is it? 143.88 up 246. Uh, you just let that keep going. Um, it's it's definitely moving up now. Uh, it's got the momentum bug. Um, maybe 146.47 is the price. Uh, for the stock and uh, be, before the end of this week and uh, that would put you into the four or five dollar neighborhood um, and I don't know what you paid for this thing but uh, uh, you're definitely getting richer here for sure um, on the other hand um, you could always look at a rollover you can uh, you know watch today tomorrow if the if the call if you can sell this call uh, that's expiring next Friday for a call that expires maybe a month further or two weeks further or something like that uh, you might have to go into a 144, or you might have to put up a few extra dollars to take the to make the thing move. But uh, you might want to buy more time because your stock is now moving. But um, you're in the money. Uh, you seem to be, uh, or at the money. Where are we again? Let me look. You're in the money, 90 cents now, um, and um, it's climbing. Uh, so uh, I'm, you know, you, a couple more days before you have to really do anything of anything. Uh, by Thursday, maybe this week, you make a move. But just see what it wants to give you. It wants to give me two more bucks tomorrow, a buck and a half more, uh, and then do a rollover. That's an idea, if that's what you want. Um, anyway. Uh, let's go. Um, uh, okay, I wrote a, a GameStop $250 strike um, January 20th, 23 for $104 premium. Should I buy it back? Uh, you wrote a uh, 260, I'm assuming a call contract uh, for January 2023. I'm assuming that's what you did. Uh, let me take a look here. Uh, January 2023, what's that strike? What, a 260. Um, okay, it's sitting at 45 to $53 a share uh, right now. The contract is 45.80 to 53 and you sold it for 104. That is a beautiful write. That is a really good write. Um you know, you you cannot go wrong if you can scoop it at the low end. I mean, if you put in a bid just above the bid price and you get it, nice take. Um uh what's wrong with that? Um time is on your side. At the end of the day, it's now the stock's 149.94 as I speak, but still, uh, you can get this thing at 
46 bucks or 46 and a half if you can scoop it that cheap nice nice right that's a really good good score a really good score um uh, the stock at the moment 149.70 obviously you're 110 out of the money you will score the remaining 45 to 50 dollars a, a contract you will score it all but January 2023 uh, we, you know you've gone you've done beautifully well really well on this uh, so buying it up here not a problem and scoring that that differential for yourself nice move and uh, wait for your next opportunity to write another contract for big premiums uh, you know whatever you think whether it's a 2023 contract or a 2022 contract uh, you know you're a, you're a long-term contract writer well done uh, there you go uh, uh, let's see uncle bruce at what point should i sell my ibm expiring next friday i'm still down on them i'm still down on these um uh, let me take a look at this IBM uh, while I've while we've got you here because I'm kind of curious how it's doing at the moment. Um, let's pop this up here. IBM one forty three ninety two on the stock uh, today, and uh, we'll put in the options uh, quote here. We're up one hundred twenty five points. Now on the Dow, by the way, looking really good on the Dow, up six on S and P. Okay, so you have uh, IBM 143s for next Friday. That would be the 13th of August. You've got 143s expiring uh, right here. Okay, so they're sitting right now. The calls 161 to 173. Uh, you're up a dollar 15 today. You're you're up nicely today. Um, sit tight uh, a little longer here. Uh, this stock is uh, delivering a return. Uh, I, it shows no sign to me that it's going to peter out. Um, yeah, it'll fluctuate, obviously. You know how this does. Uh, but uh, 144 to 145 is doable uh, here in the next 24 hours, 48 hours. That'll put your contract um, you know, into the two two fifty three dollars $3 neighborhood, probably bringing you a lot closer to your break even or even putting you in the money. But as I was saying earlier, a 143 right now, uh, let's say 170 last trade uh, for that contract. If you're looking at a 27th of uh, the end of the month, you'd have to pay more. You'd have to pay up to 230 to get into that one. Um, and I wouldn't make a rollover for just a two-week uh, time frame gain. I'd be looking at least Octobers. And a dollar seventy Octobers will probably put you into something like 150s. You'd have to go all the way to 150s, and I wouldn't want you to do that. So right now, you're you are in the best place you should be. Uh, you're in the money now. This stock is going up a dollar from here. The contract will go up 85 cents. Uh, pretty high beta now, uh, or gamma, whatever you want to call it. And um, you're uh, you've got a, a week and a half yet to go. Uh, the shares in the next couple of days could reach another two or three dollars from here. 146.50. You got yourself a, a 350 book value contract, probably a four dollar contract um, uh, available to you. So you've got some leverage now, working your way. But this is the curse of short term contracts. This is the curse of short term contracts. They really lose their uh, their uh, value dramatically coming into the last of it. But uh, you're now into the, in you're in the money. This is a different ball game. If you were still three dollars out of the money, you'd be sitting right now at about a uh, about a, maybe a 20, 30 cent, 40 cent contract, but you're now in the money. Uh, and this is a big deal. This is a big move for you. 143.91 here, uh, you know, another dollar or two, and, and this contract quickly hits three plus. And, uh, you know, it's another double from here. The shares uh, will not go up 10 bucks today. They won't go up 10 bucks tomorrow. They won't go up 10 bucks today after that. But they have the ability to rise, uh, you know, a couple of bucks a day for several days in a row if they are oversold, and they are. So back to 150 we go. Uh, maybe 146.48 is where it's headed in the very near future, like like this week, and uh, that puts you into the chips, I'm sure. So you've run it, ridden it this far. Stick around a little longer and let it uh, let it do what it does. Okay. Uh, hopefully that helps you. Um, let's continue on. All right, minute by minute, we'll watch these trades. We're up 123 on the Dow. We have a 616 gain now on uh, the Robinhood. 
4384. We have SoFi back to 1536. Now that is uh, 15 cents higher than the low of the day. We've had a couple of chances, shots to try to get over 1540. We haven't had it happen yet. This might be the one. Maybe we got a, a run this time that'll take it higher. We got GameStop at 149.94, a little better looking than before. ATIP now 427. ATIP is uh, even shooting 430 a share. Um, that is high in the day territory up 54 cents. That'll keep going higher because it is still terribly oversold. Looking very good all of a sudden on ATIP 3.3 million volume. It's about time. We have AMC still down 215 to 33305. We've got Matterport down 76 cents to 512. This is a bargain here. These $15 calls are a steal. The 1250s, if you can get the right price on these calls, you want to buy them. Uh, otherwise, uh, right puts against Matterport, right $15 puts uh, for two to four weeks out. Uh, and I think you're going to have a, a lovely time of it if you can get enough premium on them. Uh, 23andMe, 820 a share. We're down three cents now on the day. We're coming back here. Uh, there's definitely a, 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 an improvement happening on 23andMe. We're up nine on fifth wall. We're unchanged on vector acquisitions. It's come back to 1002 after being as low as 996. So that's a six cent improvement. Nothing much there yet. Um, we're up a penny on NAV site. We're still down 28 on Sextera. Got back about six cents a share so far. Nothing to get excited about. But it is uh, has stopped falling. Um, Vanek up 37 cents. Home Depot up five bucks. IBM 144.02. Dollar two in the money for that contract holder. Uh, going higher, and that is a, a a definite improvement. The Dow up 153. It's powering higher now. Now the Dow has its sights set on a possibility of a new all-time high. I don't know about today, but the all-time high is 35,192. We're 34,991. So we are 100, uh, about 200 points away from a new all-time high now. This morning, we were as low as 714. So we have come back 200 points uh, um, nicely, a, a good more than 200-point recovery. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yep, there's the, con there's the call I was waiting for. Uh, Carver, when I hit refresh on my transaction, it somehow changed it from a put to a call, and I did not catch it. So now I have to hope that the price continues to decline. Uh, so that, exactly, so <laughs> Carver, oh man, oh man, uh, yes, Carver, you need the stock now to go down, not up, because you've written a call contract, you have really got to pay attention to these, really, really stay on top of this, um, uh, so I can, when a buy it close out, or I can roll it, exactly, now you've got a contract that is going this Friday, right, it is this Friday, this is going to be really interesting to watch, uh, all right, let me take a look here at GameStop. 149.89 right now. Okay. Uh, in theory, my friend, uh, not all is lost. You're you're not done yet. Uh, just 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 you doing the right thing. You hang in there. Stay calm. Uh, if the shares this afternoon have a slump to 145, you can buy this thing back for less money and get out alive. You'll be okay. Uh, you're in there at 120. The the market now 28.40 to 32.60. It's as wide as a Mack truck on the bid ask. Now, I think you got out at 20, what did you get it out at? Uh, you received 2819. Uh, okay, so 2819 is your price. Now, in theory, my friend, you could put in a buy order right now. You could put in a buy order right now for maybe uh, um, maybe $2,751. Uh, uh, $2, Less than what you sold it for. On the off chance that you get hit, you get it. Um, uh, keep in mind also, let me double check something here. The stock's at 149.13, right? Okay. So this contract has a book value of 29.63 uh, because we're at 149.63 right now, all right? 149.63. That's a 29.63 book value. So uh, you are upside down on book value by about 140 bucks. It's all you're down in book value. Um, so if this was Friday afternoon, you'd only be out the hundred forty odd dollars, because um, you're going to buy this callback. You're not going to get exercised. You're not going to play that game. You're going to buy this callback, but you might put in a buy order for twenty seven hundred and uh, uh, fifty six dollars or something like that. Uh, just just around. Just if the stock drops a buck and a half, two bucks in 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 like a quick drop, 
the calls might back off a couple of bucks and you get hit with a market order and you're out and you bought it back for a hundred something less and you're good. You might you might play that. Maybe you maybe you can get out here with a fifty dollar gain or something like that. Um, uh, so watch. Obviously, you're you're going to watch it closely now. Are you going to learn? Are you learning how options work today? You are learning big time because you have twenty eight hundred reasons to learn now how this works. But uh, the stock, as you know, can fluctuate back and forth five dollars in five minutes each direction. You know this. One forty nine sixty, one forty nine seventy is where you're at right now. Um, uh, you could, like I said, you could put in a buy order below your buy price to close it out. Buy to close at twenty seven fifty six, something like that, and just leave it there for the day. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, wait till tomorrow, perhaps. On the other hand, if you are a more of a gambler, you don't put in a buyer at all. You just wait, see if the stock wants to drop to one forty six, one forty five. If it does hit one forty five today. This contract only has a $25 book value. You might be offering $25.50 to buy it back, and now you score $260 profit on the mistake. <laughs> $149.94, however, it's going the wrong direction, but it's not like taking off, but it is $149.92, and uh, you're going to have to keep an eye on this uh, contract. Uh, very interesting. $150.12. But do not uh, do not fret too much. Um, okay, interesting stuff. E even at one fifty, the contract is worth thirty dollars, three thousand dollars. You're on the hook for one hundred eighty bucks. Right now, you're risking one hundred eighty dollars. I'm not too. I wouldn't be too worried. But I I will caution you, and I will admit it. The stock is down seven forty. It was as low today as one forty eight twenty, and so it's come back two dollars from its low. But it's done this a couple of times today. Will it? come back or will it have another slump in the midday here and that will bail you out of this position uh very interesting uh, how this is playing out um amazing uh but yeah tomorrow you could theoretically roll it as well and uh, do that as well all right uh thank you for for filling me in here um i'll keep an eye on it with you as well unbelievable uh yeah but you really got to watch these orders folks when you enter an order triple check everything double check it is a sell to open it's a call or a put. Which one did you want to do? Make sure the price is right. Uh, make sure the expiry date is the one you wanted. Double, triple, quadruple check. It's up to you to do that. Okay. All right. I managed to get, uh, Socia says, I managed to get 40 Matterport at 1507. Uh, well, it's 1503, but I still think that's a good deal. Um, I really like it. All right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 2,800 reasons, but a put ain't one. <laughs> All righty. Uh, yesterday, I wrote a $150 covered call on GameStop for this Friday for 11 bucks. I sold it this morning with an $8 uh, buy order. I said yesterday should have canceled. Now it's like five. So um, I I wrote uh, at, at 11, sold it this morning uh, with eight, and I should have canceled it. Now it's like five. So I'm... I was, I'm assuming you made money, Rob. I, I I can't quite figure out what you're telling me. If you did, did you get out at 11, and, or did you did, you got out at 11 and bought in at eight? Did you get out at eight and you're trying to buy back at five? I don't I, I don't I'm not sure. Uh, not quite understanding all of this complicated doc. Uh, we're up 187 on the Dow. We're up 18 on S&P. Up 10 on Nasdaq. The markets are roaring higher. 15.44 on SoFi. We're down 29 cents now. We've come back 21 cents from the low of the day. So SoFi is improving as well. GameStop is improving at 156, a little better. ATIP up 48 cents to 423 on ATIP. Very good. Looking great. 424 and uh, the high of the day, 430. So that's a good day there. AMC still down a buck 99. Matterport 1508. 23andMe 818 down the nickel. Fifth wall up nine cents. Vector unchanged. Nav side up a penny. A size extra still down twenty six. IBM one forty three eighty nine. The Dow up one seventy seven. Robinhood at forty four dollars. The high today forty five dollars. Quite amazing. Uh, what a what a crazy day we have here. Uh, yeah, amazing stuff, guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, yeah, sorry, I meant bought, not sold. Says Rob. Uh, so, um, um, bought, not sold. So I, uh, so, uh, so, uh, bought, uh, let me see, or I should have canceled now. 
and bought not like again i still don't understand rob um bought not sold um i'm not i'm not quite sure still what you mean on this deal um anyway there you have it uh 43.98 on robin hood a little lower just a titch 1544 up a couple more pennies i think on sofi we're looking a little better 50, 150 53 on GameStop, holding that 150 level now. Uh, 425 on ATIP, high today, 430. Uh, the Dow up 189. The stock market has really come on with a big run here. The, the Dow is definitely picking things up. All right. Um, Uh, yeah, Arco, I had to leave early for lunch, came back, Uncle Bruce is putting in overtime. I'm still on the air, three hours, 19 minutes into the show. It's just too exciting. I can't stop. It's just too much fun. I'm having too much fun watching this market. 1547 on your SoFi, a little higher again. Still down 26 cents, but it's coming back on 6.1 million volume. That's good stuff. That's This is good. It's coming on with volume. Uh, 151 on GameStop, They're going higher again. ATIP 424 uh, and a half. Um, and uh, AMC coming back. It's only down a buck 70 now. Matterport 1509, uh, 23 and me down a nickel. Uh, there you go. IBM 143.93. It's going to hit 144 again. Going higher. We got Ma Microsoft up a buck 70, Apple up a buck 20 right at this point in time. Okay, guys, there you go. We're up a 191 on the Dow. And 20 on S&P, 24 on NASDAQ. Good market here. Definitely picking up uh, uh, some, some movement here. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. <sighs> Never a dull moment, I'll tell you that. Uh, ATIP is rolling, they say, 424. Um, Yeah, 420, 425 on ATIP, 1545 on SoFi, okay? And uh, <laughs> Stock Mars with Bruce, just a friendly reminder, you're still my boy, Bruce. Uh, you've been getting a lot of undeserved flack, so here's some positivity you deserve. Well, thank you, Erico. I appreciate that. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, you know, we have to pay the price. When you're the creator and you're the front man, you got to take it all. You got to take the good, the bad, the ugly, the frustration. But uh, I just try to tell you the markets in plain English. That's all I'm trying to do. Uh, and sometimes people don't like to hear what they have to hear. That's the way it goes. Thank you for the thumbs ups today. 601 on the thumbs ups today. Thank you so much. Uh, 122 on the downside. 723 reactions today. That's that's a, a pretty interesting number today. I appreciate that, everybody. Uh, keep those coming in if you can. Uh, we always love that. Uh, appreciate all of you for for being around. Um, thank you, uh, uh, thank you, Zach, uh, so much for the donation on on PayPal. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate that. I just I just forgot about that. It just came through there a while ago. Uh, that's awful kind of you. I appreciate that. Um, and. Uh, uh, somebody picked something up on Redbubble. Uh, really, that's awesome. Uh, somebody bought a. Uh, uh, the, what did they buy? They bought a uh, a mug. Somebody bought a mug on on uh, Stock Markets with Bruce. Thank you, everybody. Whoever's doing that, that's uh, fantastic. The royalty comes to Jennifer and I for that. We appreciate. It. And uh, that's cool bean stuff. Fifteen seventeen on Matterport uh, just popped up a little bit here. We'll take that little gain. Thank you. Um, so five fifteen forty four. GameStop back to 150.10, back the back, backing off again. Um, and we've got uh, Matterport now 15.20, uh, popping up a little more. Thank you. Uh, that is uh, very good to see. Uh, ATIP 4.26 um, on very good volume today, 3.3 or, or, or more volume today. The Dow up 174 or so, looking, looking pretty good. Um, SoFi 15.44. Uh, still down 29 cents on the day. Uh, can it break 15.50? That is the question. Uh, we haven't had that since this morning, around 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, we'll have to see how that works out. All right. Well, there it is. I think I will take my break now. Uh, in the next uh, few minutes, in the next 10, 15 minutes, I will get lesson number seven up. That is the lesson where we talk about writing put contracts, uh, which I've been talking about all morning here. Uh, I will have that lesson up and for... Uh, 
For those of you who are looking to make some money on put contracts, you feel bullish on your stock like GameStop, this is what you may want to look into, uh, writing put option contracts on stocks like GameStop, IBM, um, Apple, Microsoft, even SoFi, um, and others. So um, check it out. We'll have it up in the next 20, 30 minutes. Thank you all for being here so far today. We'll catch you today at 3 o'clock. We'll be back this afternoon for another session here as we close out today. See how everything works its way out. It's been a wacky day today. It's been a bizarro day today. Absolutely unbelievable active activity here. Uh, I can't believe it. 618 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Love you for that. Um, and uh, join me this afternoon for some more fun and merriment as we keep on going here. We're going to try to uh, try to follow this market. Hopefully, it'll just go higher, higher, and oh, yeah, higher. Uh, that would be good. Okay, SoFi, 15, 42, 43. Come on, SoFi. You can do better than that. Take us to the moon. Uh, ATIP, 426, up 50 cents. No complaints today on our ATIP. All right, guys, we'll see you in a little bit at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.